PJ with the sea captain was full of tall tales and excitement. And a row ho ho and a bottle of brew. But then one day the sea captain got sick. So sick, in fact, that he couldn't get out of bed. So sick, he couldn't go on any new adventures. That's when he told me to open the trunk. He said there was something special in there. Ooh, some dirty socks. Hello? Ah! Ah! And what's this? Holy macaroni, it's the treasure map. Hi kids, I'm Miss Booksy and this is Storytime. Today we're reading Treasure Island. Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Yo ho ho and a bottle of brew. Uh oh. Oh my gosh, are you okay? Will a parrot eat a cracker? I don't know, this is New England. Not a lot of parrots around here, do they? They do indeed, and I'm okay. Just give me a minute. Sure I can't give you a hand? Ah, uh, could ya? A hand would be great. Ah! I'm sorry. I'm okay, I just need a rest. And I've had quite a journey. Pirates, buried treasure, typhoons, sharks, etc., etc. Wow, that is so cool. Whoa, really? Yeah, Arr, and now I need a place to lie low. Hide out. Ooh, are you hiding from pirates? Yes, I am. Cool. Well, you can hide out here as long as you want. We got a bed and breakfast upstairs. Great. And could you hide my trunk? Back there ought to work just fine. Sure thing. It looks like a treasure chest. Yo ho ho and a bottle of cola. <sighs> and that's how I met the sea captain. After that, my life changed forever. Pretty soon, everybody in town was friends with the sea captain. For somebody who was hiding out, he sure did a lot of talking. He told all kinds of wild stories, like the time. Got my hand bitten off by a vicious barracuda. Hey! Oof, that's gotta hurt. I fought off a shark with one hand. Not today, hammerhead. And then there was the sea captain's number one hit. The time I found Captain Flint's treasure map. I was on the run from Long John Silver. You know Long John Silver, right? No. Yes. He's got a peg leg and a hook hair and an eye patch. And thank goodness for that patch because his one eye is the evilest eye you ever saw. If he had two evil eyes, one look from him and he'd strike you dead. Ooh. And get this, he even has a parrot that sits on his shoulder. Uh-oh, they better watch out. Okay, so back to the treasure map. Did you find the treasure? No, sadly, I never got the chance. Long John Silver chased me halfway around the globe, trying to get that map. Is Long John Silver still chasing you? I reckon he is. And if he ever shows up here, well, old Jimmy's gonna give me the signal. Yeah, like this. <whistles> Arr, that's a good signal. And lickety split, I'll be gone. And then I'll go find the treasure. Gold, rubies, diamonds, you name it. Pearls? Yeah. Sapphires? For sure. Chocolate coins wrapped in gold foil? Probably. Wow. And a row ho ho and a bottle of brew. La 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 la. Every day with the sea captain was full of tall tales and excitement. But then one day the sea captain got sick. So sick, in fact, that he couldn't get out of bed. So sick, he couldn't go on any new adventures. That's when he told me to open the trunk. He said there was something special in there. He said, When you find it, you'll know what to do. My time is up, little buccaneer. This is your story now. That is so sad. Ooh, some dirty socks. Hello? Ah! Ah! And what's this? Holy macaroni? It's the treasure map. Ooh, interesting. Let's read another story, come on. Chapter two, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. A real treasure map? Wow, but to find a treasure map and have absolutely no idea what to do about it, well, that just doesn't feel so good. And as bad luck would have it, guess who showed up? Peg leg, hook hand, eye patch, evil eye, shoulder parrot, squawk. Long John Silver's here. Squawk, make way for Long John Silver. Uh, watch out. Time for the signal. <laughs> but then I remembered that the sea captain was gone. This was my fight now. I had to be brave. 
Oh, hi, uh, what's up? Can I help you with something? Yes, I think you can. Has an old sea captain been through these parts? Perhaps dragging a trunk that looks like a treasure chest? A hook for a hand like this? Hmm, let me think, uh... Yeah, nope, that doesn't sound familiar. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go feed my cat. She's lying! She's lying! Liar, liar, pants on fire! What? No! <laughs> the sea captain. He has my treasure map. I want it back. Oh, right, 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 right. One moment. Whew, that was a close one. What's that say? Need help. I've got your back. Selena Garns, attorney at law. The shot. Hi, I need some help. Long story, but here goes. So I met the sea captain. I thought maybe he was a pirate, but he wasn't. He was just a regular sea captain. But he was running from a real pirate, and a scary one named Long John Silver, because he had a stolen treasure map. A treasure map, huh? That leads to real treasure? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Hmm, I can work with that. 10% of the cut plus expenses, and I'm in. So Selena Barnes, attorney of law, help me charter a boat. I found a boat captain and a crew. We even went shopping for some new pirate treasure hunting duds. Wow, this is so fun. And then we were off, sailing away from home and headed out into the great wide open, setting sail on our maiden voyage, heading down to the sunny tropics to get some treasure and... <laughs> Apparently, now I'm seasick. Once I got my sea legs, I went for a little looky-loo around the boat. That's when I heard something interesting. Ooh, I think it's a whale, but not that. This, listen. So LJS is on his way. As soon as we get to Skeleton Island, we'll mutiny, and then we'll take the treasure. Hmm, that sounds suspicious. Mutiny? That doesn't sound good. Wait, what does that mean? I better go ask the captain. But wait a second, who's LJS? It's not... Long John Silver says these guys don't know nothing about pirate stuff. They'll be total pushovers. Long John Silver! I should have known he was gonna chase after us. Uh-oh, this is not good. So off I went to find the captain. Captain! Captain Smallish! Captain! Hey, hey, Captain! Captain! Nah! Captain! Phew! I'm glad I found you. You gotta hear this. I overheard the other crew guys saying that Long John Silver, the pirate, is chasing us, and when we get to the island, they're going to mutiny and take the treasure. By the way, what does mutiny mean? It's when a ship's crew takes over and oust the captain. Cool, cool, what's oust mean? It means to get rid of. Generally speaking, it's not good. Right, oh no, I hope they'll be okay. So what do we do? We play it cool. Okay, so like, wear sunglasses and say things like, hey man, slap me fat. No, we act like nothing's amiss. We're outnumbered. If we fight them now, we're doomed. So we play it cool, but in the meantime, we'll make a plan. Okay, so the plan is to make a plan. I like it. And how close could Long John Silver be? He's probably way behind us. Or so we hoped. Arr! There they be! Onward, ho! Giddy up, let's go! That treasure map will be mine in no time. Ha ha ha! Squawk! Giddy up! Giddy up! Ha ha ha! Whoa, that was scary. Let's go on another adventure! Come on! Chapter 3, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time! Ah, we're so close I can smell the treasure. All I smell is parrot dander and feet. Squawk! Parrot dander and feet! Squawk! Back on our ship, we were still hatching our plan. We had to figure out how to deal with the mutineers, aka the bad guys, on our ship. And we had to figure out how to deal with Long John Silver once he caught up with us. Hey, no one ever said treasure hunting would be easy. Okay, so when we land on the island, let's tell the bad guys we're gonna split up. Then we run and get the treasure, hop on the boat, and hightail it out of there. Ah! Hey, we're making lemonade. Y'all want some? No, thank you though. All righty. Woo, that was a close one. Okay, back to the plan. So we split up, but what if they follow us? What if they try to oust us before we even get to Skeleton Island? What if they make us walk the plank? We should be ready for battle at all times. <sighs> hey, 
What's up? Hey, sorry to interrupt. We're running low on toilet paper. Just wanted to give you a heads up. Okay, okay, good to know, thanks. Aye, aye. Weesh, I think this boat is too small for secrets. So, what were we saying? Now let's not forget the other big threat. What if Long John Silver catches up with us at sea? They're sure to have all kinds of fighting things. Swords, bows and arrows, water balloons, cannons. Ah! 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 Oh no, this doesn't look good. He's here, he's here, Long John Silver is here. <gasps> what are we gonna do? You're gonna walk the plank is what? Yeah, in case you couldn't tell, we're actually bad guys. <laughs> Check out all our swords and stuff. We're total baddies. Don't show them the secret sword stash. Oops, sorry. Um, so really, what's the plan now? We can sue them for damages and psychological distress. Or we could try to steer the ship out of the line of fire. Yeah, you do that. I'll think on how to get rid of these two. Whoa! Change course! No fair! Just turn the cannons towards them! Um, Captain? Yes? It might be a little bit late for this, but... Take that, bad guy! <laughs> Land ho! Land ho! Land ho! Squawk! Ha! They crashed! Also look! We've reached Skeleton Island! Woohoo! I'm just gonna sail to the other side of the island before we disembark! Good thinking. I'd like to avoid Long John if we can. Um, but what about these guys? Oh, I almost forgot. Ah! Ah! Jump! Well, that was easy. You saved my life! How'd you learn to do that? Guess I picked up a thing or two from the sea captain. Just need a little bit more practice. <laughs> So, cannon attacks aside, things were kind of looking up. Maybe we could land ho, get in, get out, grab the treasure, bing bang boom. Or maybe this pirate party was just getting started. Whoa, that was scary. Let's go on another adventure, come on. Chapter four, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. So, let's see. According to this map, the treasure is, um, Okay, mm -hmm. I'm just going north two stars over that way. Hmm, that way. Well, okay then. I guess a captain would have a good sense of direction. Uh, yeah, sorry guys. I think the map was upside down. Oh no, I hope they'll be okay. Ah, a bug just landed on me. Ah, shoo, shoo, shoo flies. You know what? I'm just going to hang by the ship. You know, keep watch. Make sure no bad guys take it. Good thinking. Ah! Snake! Where? There? Uh, I... I think they're everywhere. Wait, what's that sound? Sounds like a kookaburra. Really? I don't know. I've just always wanted to say kookaburra. Any luck with that map, Captain? I think we go that way. Or not. Sinking sand. I bet you this is a booby trap set to keep us away from the treasure. Classic pirates, Jeff. That must mean we're close. Cool. Let's go. Uh, Captain? <laughs> oh no. This doesn't look good. Don't move. Good boy. Yep. Just sniff and move along. Nothing to see here. <laughs> That's it. I'm getting out of here. <laughs> Take that, pirates! Okay, let's go. Yeah. Booby traps won't work on us. <laughs> Ooh, that's gotta hurt. Ow! Oh. Ow! I think maybe let's try another direction this time. Roger that. But then, as soon as we changed direction, we heard this. Ah! Ah! Food! Food! Huh? Food! Food! I think he wants food. Oh, I, uh, I got some cookies. 
Oh, that was scrumptious. Well, that was weird. Please do pardon my behavior before I was simply ravenous. I've been living off grubs and worms. For how long? Oh, I've lost track of time. I guess it's been about three years, four months, two weeks, and six days. So almost three years, four months, and three weeks, give or take. Oh, wow. How'd you end up here? Shipwreck? Balloon mishap? I was captured at sea by pirates, then abandoned here. Can you believe that? Real pirates? Yeah, we can believe it. We were actually chased here by Long John Silver. <gasps> no! Yes, do you know him? He's the one who captured me. Why, he's the gnarliest, crustiest, meanest, stinkiest pirate there ever was. Yeah, we have a treasure map, and he followed us all the way here to get it. Captain Flint's treasure? Yeah. You'll never find it. Oh, come on, man. Don't be a party pooper. Why would you say that? That treasure is cursed. Cursed. Cursed? Cursed. Cursed. Cursed? When are we going to catch a break? A curse? Oh, no. Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter five. Here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Cursed? Yes. How many times do I have to tell you? Cursed. Okay, well, can you explain? Like, what kind of curse? Like, whoever finds it will turn into a frog, and then she has to find a charming prince to kiss before she turns into a pumpkin at midnight. Just spitball in here. No way. Worse. Okay, so what is it? I tell you, anyone who seeks the treasure is cursed to a life of despair. What does that mean? Well, look at me. I thought I would find the treasure, and I got captured by pirates and left to eat grubs and worms. Uh-oh. This doesn't sound good. That doesn't necessarily mean there's a curse. Maybe you're just unlucky. Well, your friend the sea captain didn't seem so lucky either. That's true. Or Long John Silver. I mean, his ship just crashed. Yeah. And we got rained on by cannon fire, fell up to our necks in sinking sand, and you almost got gobbled up by an anteater. These are all good points, yes. See, cursed. But wait, you said that anyone who looks for the treasure is cursed? Yes, indeed. Well, we already started looking, so I guess we're already cursed. Might as well keep going, am I right? Yeah, why not? Well, I've got nothing to lose. So let's keep going. Curse Schmersh, who cares? Let's get some treasure. <laughs> but maybe there was a curse because things were about to get worse. Which way should we go? How about that way? <laughs> ah, watch out! Ah! Gotcha! These guys again? Psh, I'll just whip out my sword and do some fierce pointy jabs, and they'll go running back to Long John Silver. Oops. It was scarier last time. Yeah, I haven't had much time to practice. Well, looks like we have all the swords, so you'll just do as we say. Got it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what are we doing? Walking the plank? You need a ship to do that. You're gonna give us that treasure map. The treasure map? Never. Give it. No way. Come on. Nuh-uh. Please. Keep dreaming. Hand it over. I eat it before I give it to you. Oh yeah? Yeah. We'll do it then. Okay. Mm. Delicious. How are they ever gonna get out of this one? I didn't think you'd actually do it. Neither did I. Yeah, me neither. That was next level. Uh. Oh man, how are we gonna find the treasure now? Spit it out! Never! Well then, you're coming with us. Where? To Long John Silver. No, not him! You know him? Yes, I'm his former prisoner. Great, I'm sure he'll be happy to see you again. Now chop chop, let's go. See, I told you my friend, we're cursed! The situation is not ideal, but we'll turn it around. You see, I'm an optimistic person. I look on the bright side of life, the sunny side, the... You were saying? Um, that everything's gonna be okay. And look on the bright side, turn lemons into lemonade, etc., etc. Well, that's a nice outlook. It'll serve you well when you're all tied up and shot out of my cannon into the sea. Eww. <laughs> Uh-oh. What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter six, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. <clears throat> so you wanna tie us up and shoot us out of cannons into the sea. Just making sure I heard you correctly. Yes, but first give me that treasure map. I know you have it. Ha ha, 
<laughs> What's so funny? I'd love to give you the treasure map, but I can't. You can't? You can't. You can't. It's impossible. Then why is that? Why is that? Why is that? <laughs> um, so she, uh, ate it. She ate it? Ate it? Ate it? We were all like, what? What? Would you please quit repeating everything? Please quit repeating everything. <laughs> oh, forget it. Forget it. Forget it. All right. So spit it out. Never. Then I'll just have to make you spit it out. Uh-oh. She better watch out. And so Operation Get the Treasure Map began. First, they fed me terrible flavor combos like... Tuna salad topped with hot fudge. Cake pops frosted with ranch dressing. Gross. No. Toothpaste. An orange juice. An orange juice. <laughs> Why? Why is that the worst taste in the world? <sighs> But the smorgasbord of yuckiness didn't do the trick, so they told me to spin around 27 times really fast. 27? That's oddly specific, but okay. Now smell this sock. <laughs> wow, that is so mean. Finally, they set me afloat to let my seasickness take over. Oh, I could feel the grody food commingling with the old crusty treasure map in my belly. And the raft just kept bobbing, and my head was spitting, and, excuse me, <laughs> they got the map. Your treasure map, sir. Oh, now it's all yucky, and the ink's all smudgy. That's just great. That's just great. That's just great. But meanwhile, I was just out there, floating, drifting further and further away. Hey, I can't swim. Hey, Captain Smallish, beardy guy. I'm sorry I didn't get your name, but please help. A ship. Hey, maybe it's someone here to rescue us. Yeah, I bet Selena Bard signaled for help, and then this ship full of good guys showed up to rescue us. Ooh, this is so exciting. Hey, down here. Look. Grab the rope. We'll pull you up. Yes, I knew it. We're saved. Ooh, I hope they have some ginger ale up there. <sighs> Hi, my name's Jimmy. Hello, my name is Captain Hooksy. Oh, well, I'm pleased to meet you, Captain. That's my friend's name, too. Anyway, you came just in the right time. The super scary pirate Long John Silver is over there on Skeleton Island. Did you say Skeleton Island? Yeah, scary name, right? <laughs> That's it, mateys! Land ho! Let's go get that treasure! Woohoo! But first, tie this one up. What? I thought you were here to rescue us. And cover her mouth. She's too yappy. No! Whoa, that was scary. Let's go on another adventure. Come on! Chapter 7, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. I never realized how much I love talking. Okay, so the ship turned out to be full of more baddies. Just my luck. We're here. Drop anchor. Uh, ow. Let's go get that treasure. Hello? Guys? Captain Hooksy? Anyone? Looks like the coast is clear. Now, I just gotta get untied. Oh no, this doesn't look good. Let's see what these pirates are up to. Okay, looks like Long John Silver's gone treasure hunting. Now, where are Captain Hooksy and her cronies? Oh, there she is. She's hot on their trail. Oh, and poor Captain Smallish and Beardy Guy are still tied up. Oh, if I could get myself untied, I would go help them. What am I gonna do? I can't jump into the water like this. I'll sink like a stone. Hmm. Not the best idea I've ever had, but it'll have to do. Ah! Ooh, this is kind of fun, though. Eee! Ow! Ah. Ooh, that was a close one. Hey. Oh, the rope's come undone! Woo -hoo -hoo! Wow! 
Whoa, that was incredible. Yeah, now untie us, pretty please. You guys are never gonna believe this. There are new pirates here. I thought it was bad enough that Long John Silver's here. Now there's this Captain Hooksy to deal with. No, 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 no. Um, something you wanna share with the group? Captain Hooksy is the other pirate that captured me. You've been captured by pirates more than once? Yes. How did you leave that out of your bio? Well, it's a little embarrassing. I almost escaped Skeleton Island a couple of years ago. I built a boat and set sail for home. Then, boom! Captain Hooksy caught me and made me work as her butler. Well, that doesn't sound so bad. But then I messed up her tea, and she made me walk the plank. Always remember, two lumps of sugar, not one, two. That is so not cool. And so you wound up back here on Skeleton Island? Correct. See? Told you I'm cursed. So what's she like, beyond the two lumps of sugar thing? <laughs> She's a real baddie. Almost as bad as Long John Silver. Maybe worse. But everyone says Long John Silver is the meanest, stinkiest pirate there ever was. Oh, she's mean all right and stinking. I once saw her make a flamingo walk the plank. I mean a flamingo. I mean, it just flew away, of course. But still, it was mean. Wow, that is so mean. Well, we have two choices. Get back to the ship and go home, no treasure, or we stick to the plan and find the gold. Maybe fight a few pirates along the way. I vote go home. I vote stay and find the treasure. Hmm, up to me with the deciding vote, huh? I say let's find the treasure. When will we ever get another chance to find real treasure? Ooh, this is so exciting. Okay, let's giddy up. Um, one problem. We don't have the map. All oh, right. Huh. Can you remember at all what it looked like? Any landmarks? No, there were drawings of trees, but there are trees everywhere. Think, think, there has to be something you remember. Something that can help us. There was some writing on it, a poem or something. Oh yeah, maybe that's a clue. It said, it always runs, but never leaves. Leaves? Trees? Like I said, there were a lot of trees on the map. Nah, that's not it. What always runs, but never leaves? A refrigerator? Perhaps a hamster in one of those wheels. Water runs? Is there a spout somewhere on the island? No, there's no running water here. If you need fresh water, you have to go to the waterfall. <gasps> That's it, it must be buried near the waterfall. The water runs, but the waterfall never leaves. Can you lead the way? Sure. Let's go. And so we were off, off to see the wonderful wizard of, wait, no, different story. <laughs> we were off to find the treasure of Skeleton Island, nay, Treasure Island. Kids, what do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure, come on. Chapter eight, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. We were on our way to the waterfall, the location of the buried treasure, hopefully. Maybe, fingers crossed. Ooh, ah! But something was telling us the pirates were on the same path. Are you okay? Yeah, it just fell into this hole here. Looks freshly dug. The pirates must have been here digging for the treasure. Ugh. Whoa. You all right? Yes, I guess they were just being thorough. Well, guess they left no stone unturned. No hole undug. Give me a hand! Uh-oh. This doesn't sound good. Shh! Hear that? Dig! I don't think it's here, Captain Hooksy. Just dig! Yes, ma'am. We better hide! We're not leaving till we've dug up every bit of dirt on this island. I'm going to find this treasure if it's the last thing I do. What is it? Tight. Thank you. But shh, who's there? No one. I don't think that's gonna work. You? I thought I left you tied up on my ship. Well, I cannonballed myself back onto the island, so... Uh-oh, she better watch out. You've seen the map. You know where the treasure is, don't you? What? Me? <laughs> is that what you said? Or did you say Matt? Matt who? Yeah, I don't know anybody named Matt. Actually, my name is Matt. Oh, really? I've just been calling you Beardy Man. I didn't say Matt. I said map, as in treasure map. Oh, 
Oh, right, 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 right. Tell me where the treasure is, and I'll let you leave this island in one piece. Okay, you drive a hard bargain. It's that way. All righty, mateys, let's go get some treasure. Oh, told you, cursed. Come on, I don't have all day. How are they ever gonna get out of this one? Meet me at the waterfall. What? Shh, I said, meet me at the waterfall. Oh, I, I. <sighs> Now march! We probably need a plan, don't we? So we think it's somewhere near this waterfall. Okay, start digging. Me? Well, I'm not digging. Well, I don't have a shovel. Use your hands. <sighs> okay. And so I dug, and I dug, and dug, and I dug, and I dug, and I dug. You dig? And then finally, I found something! Treasure? Hey, this looks just like the one the sea captain gave me. Open it, open it! Patience is a virtue. Open it. Aye, aye. Kids, what do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure, come on. Chapter nine, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. So I was just about to open the wooden chest that I found. You know, the one that looked like it probably, most likely, very possibly contained treasure. Yeah, that one. Anyway, so I, ahem, uh, uh, I'm waiting. Oh, yes, right, right, right. Uh, mm. Alrighty, here I go, opening this treasure chest now. Okay, now would be a really good time for my friends to come and save me. <sighs> oh no, this doesn't look good. What is the holdup? Move, I'll do it. <laughs> ah! <laughs> ah! Hello, ladies. Long John Silver is back. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. That's right, and I'll just be taking that treasure. K thanks, bye. I don't think so, Long John. Oh, big sword! Oh, another big sword! Oh. Still, guys, really? How long can two pirates sword fight? Oh, kind of getting bored over here. Wait a minute. If they're distracted, then maybe I could just sneak away with it. Ooh, this is so exciting. Okay, easy does it. A few more steps and I'll be in the clear. Oh, I was just about to escape the pirates and get the treasure. Amazing, right? And then I looked up and saw this. We're coming down to save you. No, shh, I'm about to make a clean getaway. What did she say? I don't know. What did you say? Uh, shh! Thank you, but no thank you. I'm good. What? I, I think she said thank you. Oh, thank you. Wow, good. Aw, that's nice. Well, let's go. Yippee ki yay, Buccaneers! Huh? Yeah. No! And just when I was about to sneak away from the pirates, once and for all, I gotta go and get rescued. Oh no. I hope they'll be okay. Well, what do we have here? You just wait till I get out of here. We're gonna teach you a lesson. Are ya? Yes, we will, old chap. Looks like I gotta rescue the rescuers. Okay, think, Jimmy. Hey, pirates! No! It's deep. I can't see without my swim goggles. Quit splashing me! I didn't splash, you splashed! It's gone! My treasure is gone! Your treasure? It's my treasure! Come on, guys, hop up! We have to go while the getting's good! AKA, let's vamoose, scram, make like a tree and leaf, shake a leg, giddy up! Uh, Jimmy? <laughs> Kids, what do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure, come on.
Chapter 10, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Are you going somewhere? Us? No, why would we go anywhere? We love this island, it's paradise. Plus, you guys are so nice. Are you being sarcastic? No! I think you are. Well, it doesn't matter anyway, because we stole your ship. No. Yep, look. <gasps> no! Oh no, 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 no! I told you we were cursed! Found it! <gasps> I found the treasure! Woohoo! It's mine! How are they ever gonna get out of this one? Hooks off! I saw it first! Uh uh Yeah, huh? Paper, rock, scissors for it! Fine! Paper, rock, scissors, shoot! You can't use hook! It's not paper, rock, scissors, hook! One more! For real this time! Paper, rock, scissors, hey look over there! Where? Haha, <laughs> gotcha! I win! I win! No fair! Hey, it's just full of dirt and rocks! It was that girl! She stole my treasure! Let me at her! Yikes, scary, right? I would be frightened, but nope. Cause we hightailed it out of there while they were playing rock, paper, scissors. Made it to the ship, baby. Now, we just gotta set sail before the bad guys find out. Take that, bad guy. Pull up anchor, Captain. Aye, aye. And hoist the sails. Aye, aye. Now let's go. I said let's go. Did you pull the anchor? Yeah. Hoist the sails? Yeah. Why aren't we moving? No wind? I tell you, we're cursed. Hello. Waiting for us? Ah, the pirates. Whoa. Ow, and I fell? I am cursed. I have the worst luck in the world. Um, Jimmy. What? We're moving. We are? We are. Ah. Woohoo! Bye-bye, pirates. See you never. Yay! Woo, that was a close one. We did it, gang. And woo, what an adventure. Pirates, sinking sand, cannonballs, sword fights, buried treasure. Wait, the treasure! That was our one chance to get away, Jimmy. I know it's sad, but we had to leave it behind. Did we? I pulled the old classic switcheroo, put the rich stuff in my boots, and filled the treasure chest with dirt and rocks while the pirates weren't looking. Ah, amazing! Lovely! The diamonds were really poking my feet when we were running to the ship, but it was all worth it. Now let's just get home and try to live happily ever after, or something like that. Aye aye, Captain. Wait, that's me, I'm the Captain. How much is there? I get 10%, remember? Oh, do you guys mind dropping me off in England? That would be lovely. And would you mind untying me? That was such a great ending. Thanks for coming to Storytime. See you next time. Bye. I feel weird. Pan, you gotta do something. She needs her fairy glitter. Otherwise she gets really weak. What are we gonna do? Well, there's one thing. If everybody claps, then we'll show her that people still believe in fairies. Of course we believe in fairies. And all of you, out there, if you believe in fairies all together, I need you to clap your hands. Please. Please, for my bestie, clap your hands so Tink can hear you. Hi, I'm Pam. Peter Pan, I have so much cool stuff to show you guys, but first I want to tell you about a very special family, the Darling family. And there was a huge battle. You'll never catch me. Oh yeah, watch me. And Peter Pan was so quick, flying through the air like a little white bird. Yep, they're talking about me. Every night, Mrs. Darling tells bedtime stories about me and all my buddies. And my favorite thing to do is listen outside the window. Soaring through the air with Tinkerbell. I love this part. They race to the pirate ship in the middle of the sea. Come on, Tink. Those pirates won't get away with this. I got your back, buddy. Hey, I 
have a great idea. Yeah? How about in this story, I get to be Tinkerbell. Ooh. Please, I've always wanted to be a fairy with wings. I love it. Yes, this is awesome. And these wings are more glittery than I imagined. Huh, Tink, what'd you say? Uh, <laughs> nothing. Land ho! What, Tink, you're being so weird. Um, look, pirates! Whoa, yeah, there they are, quick! Hey, you stinky old pirates. Aw, oh, man, not this kid again. Put your dukes up, Starkey. Ah, I didn't do it, I didn't do it. What's all this fuss about? You know what, Zoro? I think you're so brave. Who, me? Yes, brave enough to play a pirate. Yeah, totally. I can do this, a pirate, Er. Um, okay, where's your leader? You mean Captain Hook? Arr. And then, I, I wanna, wanna fly, fly like Peter, Peter Pan. Pan. Hey, Mom. Mom. I can fly! Watch me! <laughs> Ouch. Is it weird I like to listen to stories about myself? All right, all right, kids. I think it's about time for bed. Nana! <laughs> yep, their babysitter is a dog. I'm telling you, the craziness is only getting started. Sure. And she speaks. <laughs> Hmm, that's weird. I could have sworn I heard something out there. <laughs> They're all set for bed, Mrs. Darling. I've looked high and low for my phone, you guys. Um, I don't have it. My girl? Sorry, Dad, it was our buried treasure. Oh? Huh? You know, like in the story of Peter Pan. Peter Pan? Oh, Dad, Peter Pan? Oh, that silly kid. Hey, rude. All right, everyone to bed. Especially you, Wendy. You have a big math test tomorrow. Ugh, growing up is hard. Don't do it. Don't grow up. We, we won't. Night-night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mom. You closed the window? Uh, yeah. It's freezing. But Peter Pan <sighs> might come to the window. Huh? To visit. Oh, Wendy dear, Peter Pan is just a story. Peter is not real. Ha! That's what she thinks. But one night, I was listening to stories, minding my own beeswax. The kids were doing their bedtime routine. So one night, the kids were doing their bedtime routine. Story, bath, brush your teeth, bed. You know, the huge. Me and my shadow were chilling outside. Oh, BT Dubs, that's my shadow. She comes with me everywhere I go. Right, Shadow? <laughs> what, what is that smell? <laughs> Smells like cinnamon buns? John, ew! Oh, I was saving that for later. <laughs> OMG, that's so gross. <laughs> Is it me? I, I swear I showered. Ooh, not sure. Yesterday? No. Yes. Today? No. It was definitely yesterday. It smells like Girl Scout cookies. A possible intruder. But Nana, I'm telling you, there's nothing else. Yeah. What the? Oh. I can't believe it. You're real. I'm sorry, Shadow. I gotta get out of here. I'll come back for you. Uh, oh man. Oh man. Oh man. Oh man. That was not good. What am I gonna? You know what? Oh, tank. Don't sneak up on me like that. Sorry, boss. And I told you, you don't need to call me boss. Oh, sorry, boss. Um, boo thing. Ah, tank. I lost my shadow. The darlings totally trapped me, and now they have it. What are they gonna do with it? Oh no! Well, 
We should go get it back. Yeah, you're right. But we gotta wait until they go to sleep. Meanwhile, back at the darlings. I can't believe it. She's really real. I knew it. And her shadow detached from her body. Scientifically, that is a conundrum. Well, this is certainly more exciting than our regular bedtime routine. We should put her shadow in the drawer for safekeeping. I'll help. Oh, goodness. In you go. Operation Shadow Rescue on a dark, cold night. Little long-winded there, Pan. Right. Operation Shadow underway. Gonna need a shovel. Really? A battery pack. Um. A grapple. What is that? This kayak. Seems a little excessive. Yeah, you're right. Okay, let's go get that shadow. Wait a minute, Miss Booksy. I thought there were going to be pirates in this story. Yes, the world. I just really like being a pirate. Don't worry, your special part is coming up. Okay, cool. Back to the story. Okay, I'm gonna crack open the door, and since you're tiny, you fly in and try to find my shadow. Awesome! PNT on three. One, two. Huh? Oh, huh. I was thinking we could start a team cheer. No time. Go. Hmm, no, nope, not under there. What about here? No. OMG, Peter, here! Oh, my shadow! Hey, I'm in here! Oh, I miss ah. you, you little cute hey. shadow, you! Ah. Hey! Ah. Oh, oh my. Ah. What is going on? Glitter in this pouch, and I'm not afraid to use it. Peter, I knew you'd come back. Oh, um, hello. My name is Pete. Uh, well, I guess you know my name since you just said it. <laughs> uh, I get nervous making new friends. Oh, Peter, let me help you with that. Gee, I uh, I'm not used to having someone take care of me like this. Really? What about your mom? Her, well, I live in Neverland, and there are fairies and mermaids and pirates, but my parents work a lot, so I don't get to see them very much. Oh, that must be so hard. Yeah, but you seem like such a good mother. Well, I'm not exactly a mother. Oh, I have a great idea. What about being a Cub Scout mom? Are you kidding me? Sorry, I'm so confused. Well, in Neverland, I'm the Cub Master for a whole group of Cub Scouts. We'd love to have someone like you in our troop. So what do you say? Want to come to Neverland with me? So what do you say? Want to come to Neverland with me? Oh my, that's, that's, a, that's a big decision. What about my home and my brothers and my math test tomorrow? What's a math test? You know, addition, subtraction, multiplication, radical expression. Uh, the only radical expressions I know are like, yeah, serves up, bro, radical man, totally, dude. Look, Peter, I can't just leave my brothers. They can come with. Hey, little dudes, wake up, rise and shine. I'm awake. Mm. Hiya. Whoa, you're ready for action, little guy. <laughs> what? Uh, what's happening? Is that you, Peter? Yep. <laughs> so me and your big sis are headed to Neverland. You coming? Yes. Oh, I, uh, boys, I, I don't know. We should think about this. Miss Wendy, I promise I'll keep you guys safe. Let's just all go have an adventure together, and I'll get you back here in time for your muffin test. Math test. Whatever. Let's go. Um, Peter? Oh, <laughs> I almost forgot. Just close your eyes. And think of your favorite candy. And your favorite song. La, la, la. Michael, shush. And fly. Um, Peter. Not now, Tink. I'm working over here. Peter. Tink, I swear I can't think when you keep saying my name. Peter. <laughs> um, right. Thanks, Tink. Fairy glitter. Tinkerbell, hit him with your best shot. Sure, boss. Oh my, I've always wanted to fly. From a physics standpoint, this seems impossible, but I like it. 
<laughs> you guys are doing great. Keep your spirits up and your eyes on me. Let's go to Neverland and Tink, keep a steady stream of fairy glitter too. You got it. As the new friends flew from their house through the sky to Neverland, they encountered some amazing things in the sky. Hey look, a flying metal tube. You mean an airplane? <laughs> okay, Wendy, nobody calls it that. Um, literally everyone calls it an airplane, Peter. Whatever, let's grab onto the wings and go for a ride. Whee! Uh oh. Oh boy, maybe we should try something else. Everybody, jump! Whoa, I'm floating! You don't even need fairy glitter here. Ooh, is that the moon? My research indicates that the moon is made of cheese. Only one way to find out! Oh, Peter, you wouldn't! <laughs> Watch me! Hmm, tastes like chicken. Cheesy chicken. <laughs> Meanwhile, things on the pirate ship were getting a little wild. Okay, 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 you bunch of ragamuffins. Listen up. Or what? Ah, Starkey, I can't deal with you being snarky. Sit down. Ah, uh, sorry, Smee. I'll clean that up right away. Listen, Captain Hook has had a really bad day. What else is new, Mr. Stinky Attitude Hook? Anyways, he lost his special glove that he wears over his hook to sword fight and, and other piratey things. Yar, I heard Hook crying all night long. Shh, Bob, don't say his name. We don't want to wake him up. He was taking his afternoon nap. Arr, who dared utter my name? Uh-oh. Bill Jukes. Yes, sir. Was it me, sir? Get me my tablet. Yes, sir. <laughs> now, where is Pan? Last we tracked her, she was at Mermaid Lagoon. Do, do you think Pan stole your glove? Of course I think Peter Pan stole me glove. She's always up to mischief, that one. Urgh. Peter Pan's impossible to track. Do you want someone to walk the plank to make you feel better? Oh. Hmm. Bob. Oh, please, sir. Not again. Just kidding. Phew. Maybe tomorrow. Oh. Everyone was stunned by the beauty of the Mermaid Lagoon. Why, I've never seen anything quite like this before. I hear them singing. Watch that one over there. She's on the national flipping team. Wow, they swim so fast. You think that's fast? Watch this. Ah, oh, Peter. We missed you, Peter. Where have you been? Oh, I've just been out making new friends, wheeling and dealing. Silly girl. Whoa there. I can have lots of friends at once. Well, I know your BFF Tank should be around here somewhere. Tank? Tank? Hey, ladies. You giving Peter a hard time. <coughs> yes. Well, we're just joking. Here, catch. Uh-huh. You mermaids ready for a rematch? Last time Peter and I kicked your booties in this game. Oh yeah, game on. Back at the ship, Captain Hook and the pirates came up with a scheme to find Pan. Arr, I say we go to the Green Peace Club. Yeah! And kidnap their leader, Tiger Lily. Yeah! She's friends with Pan. We'll use Tiger Lily to lure Peter Pan to us. <laughs> yeah! It was true. Peter Pan and Tiger Lily were really good friends. Tiger Lily was a park ranger and the leader of the Green Peace Club. They were a group of environmentalists, which pretty much means they lived off the land and tried to protect Mother Earth. There's Tiger Lily now. Oh, I just love squash. This butternut is going to be delightful. Hey, boss. Hey, Tiger Lily. We heard there's some new peeps afoot in Neverland. Cool. New friends. Well, we don't know that yet. 
Yeah, with your permission, we want to go check them out. Make sure they aren't a threat to the environment. Sure, but be back soon. I'll make you herbal tea. Okay. okay. Now, Smee, follow my lead. Okay, Captain. We're going to pretend to be farmers. Put on this hat. Why, Captain? Arr, no time to explain. Just follow me. Do da do da do, I love plants, la 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 la, and trees. Do da do, I love the sun. Um, excuse me, ma'am. Yes, farmer. I'm sorry, I don't think we've been acquainted. We haven't. What my colleague is trying to say is that we are new farmers here. Hmm, I usually know about all the activity here at Greenpeace Club. Arr, uh, uh, uh. And what happened to your hand? Uh-oh. And why must you ask so many questions, girl? This is not gonna be good. I think you need to leave. I'm not leaving until you tell me where Pan is. Captain Hook, I knew it. Tell me where Pan is or you'll walk the plank. Let me go, I'm a pacifist. I don't like to fight. But while Tiger Lily was fighting for her life, the mermaids noticed the onlookers at their game. Hey, look, invaders! Be gone, you strangers! Splash them! Hey, stop it! Girls, girls, quit it! We don't want any interlopers here. <coughs> we mean no harm. Everyone, stop! This is your last chance, Tiger Lily. No way! It's Captain Hook! And Tiger Lily. Oh no, he must have captured her. We gotta save her. Okay, Wendy, you stay with the den. But I want to come with you, Peter. I can help. Okay, fine. Wendy, you come with me. Scouts, you take the darling boys back to the bunker. And mermaids, chill out. These are my friends. Tink, let's go. So Peter Pan, Wendy, and Tink flew quick as a flash towards Captain Hook and Tiger Lily. I hope we make it in time. Almost there. This would be a lot easier if you would just tell me where Pan is. I'm a loyal friend and I won't give her to you. Aw, oh, come on. Sorry, BFF code of honor. Arr, it's very important that I find Pan. She has something of mine. Like what? Your sense of decency? A fly I would never hurt. But Pan? Oh, Peter Pan, I'll squash him like a fly. You're so rough, dude. You have no idea. Who hurt your feelings so bad that you're this way, Hook? Well, it was this one time when I was little and... Hey, stop trying to understand me. I'm a mean pirate. That's that. I don't believe that. There must be a good guy under there. I'm not so sure. We all belong to this planet and Mother Earth is love. Stop it with this nonsense. I'm bad, and you're whatever. And Pan is toast. Let's go. Peter, you have to do something. Tink, we got this. I promise, Tiger Lily, you're going to love walking the plank. Not if I can help it. What? Who said that? Over here. Who? What? Where? Oh, Captain Hook! Huh? Look! Right over there! <laughs> you just got fairy glittered, man! <coughs> what in the world? Um, Captain? Oh no you don't, you stinking pirate! You're not getting away that easily! I knew you'd come, Pan! Of course! BFF Code of Honor! Quick! <laughs> Well, my plan worked. All I wanted was to find you. Hey, well, what's happening? Fairy glitter. Come on, Peter. What is this, this witchcraft? Well, only enough magic in there to make you float for like five minutes. By then, we'll be long gone. <laughs> oh, thank the goddess. Sorry to leave you hanging. <laughs> Get it? Hanging, floating? Tink, come on. No time for jokes. Peace out, dudes! <laughs> Meanwhile, the scouts and darling boys had been on their way back to the bunker. Not too much longer, boys. Just a smidge more walking. 
My calculations tell me we should head due north. Have you had that compass this whole time? Why, yes. I never leave home without it. And my calculations tell me it's snack o'clock. Finally! Yeah, my belly is a-rumbling for some treats. Nibs, what do you got? Well, I have been so excited to have you guys taste test these candies. We love candy. I do say, this looks splendid. It's filled with chocolate and sprinkles and butterscotch and sour gummies and sugar snap peas and covered in powdered sugar. Sounds interesting. Tastes interesting. While we rest our weary bodies, we should play a game of charades. Yay! We'll, we'll go, go first. first. Three words. Um, Santa Claus? No. First word. Measuring out flour for a cake? No. Scooping sauce onto pasta? No. Squeezing glue to make slime? Come on, man. Isn't it obvious? No. no. We're, We're carving, carving a, a pumpkin. pumpkin. Oh. oh. Uh, I think I ate too much. My tum tum. Well, we should probably get back before it gets too dark. Yeah, let's go. One little problem. The members of the Green Peace Club were hot on their trail. Remember they were looking for the new people they heard about in Neverland? Well, let's just say the Darling Boys didn't make a great first impression. <gasps> Trash. You mean littering. We have to find who did this. And bring them to Tiger Lily. Man, oh man, she's not going to be happy about this. Earth vandalizers on our island? No bueno. Let's get them. So the members of the Green Peace Club were relentlessly looking for the Earth Vandalizers, aka the Scouts and Darling Boys who left trash behind in the woods. That's a big no-no. Plastic? I can smell it! Yep, this way. That was a really fun game of charades! Yeah, but how could you not guess carving a pumpkin? So easy! Twas not! Was too! Sorry, twins, it was pretty tricky! Shh, quiet! Shh! Did you hear that? I don't hear anything. Shh. What is it, John? Not sure yet. I hear rustling. It's probably just a deer. Or a pirate. What? what? Mm, no, those steps are heavier than a deer. But lighter than an elephant. There aren't elephants in the woods. It's Neverland. You want to bet? Shh. Stop arguing before something bad. Ha <laughs> ha. Gotcha! What do what? Let us out of here! This is unacceptable! We come in kindness. Um, you literally trapped us. How is that kind? Well, we don't know what kind of vagrants are roaming this island. It's our mission to keep this a peaceful place and the land pure. This is all very harmonious, but can you let us out of here? We'll let you out, but you have to come with us. What? Why? Oh, JK. You scouts are good, we know you. Yay! But you boys need to come with us. No! Sorry, they violated the Neverland Environmental Law 26.2. Never ever litter in Neverland. Well, how do you know it was us? Come on, man. Uh, what, who, uh, me? Ugh, Michael. Well, we aren't leaving without our new friends. Yeah, you either take none of us or all of us. Uh, okay, fine. Everyone line up. Oh, that didn't quite go how I thought it would. Wait, I have a better idea. We can run back to the bunker and get Peter. Yes, she'll know what to do. Yeah. Oh, um, okay, fine. Go ahead, take them. Yeah, we def won't be going to, uh, get help or anything. What? Don't worry, we have a plan. Okay, whatever. You two, let's go. John, this is very bad. Where's Wendy? You're coming with us to our headquarters. But what everyone didn't know was that Peter was on her way to the Green Peace Club with Tiger Lily. Wait, so if the scouts are going to the bunker to find Peter, she won't even be there. Right, because Peter will be at the Green Peace Club. And that's where the Darling Boys are headed right now. Yes, everyone is basically headed in the same direction at the same time. I wonder what will happen when they all end up at the Green Peace Club together. John, I'm scared. 
I know. I am too. But I'm sure that Wendy and Peter will figure out a way to save us. Thanks for your help back there, Pan. Of course. <laughs> I just knew you'd come. You bet. We'll make sure you get back to the club safely. Come on, little dudes. You're moving too slow. Yeah, the seasons are going to change before we get there. Huh? Sorry. We all got to start running. Oh, man. Faster. Run faster. I'm running as fast as I can. Yeah, sorry. My legs are short. So basically everyone was running. Running towards each other. Almost there. I sure hope Michael and John are okay. Huh? Random time for you to be thinking about them. I just have this weird feeling. I miss Wendy. I know. Me too. Come on. Keep running. Just a little farther. Tink, why are you wasting your energy running? You can fly. I can fly? OMG, for a quick sec I forgot. We're flying now. I can fly! Yes! Sorry! Well, I'll be darned. How is this happening? We're flying? Wendy, is that you? John, do you know these guys? Boss, there you are. We were just coming to see you. Peter, save us! We've been trapped! What? But these guys are my friends. And you guys are my friends. And you guys are my friends. And I know you, and you, and you! Michael, are you okay? Everybody! Chill! Ouch! Ugh, my booty! Tink, why'd you do that? Because we all need to keep calm, carry on, talking. How poetic, Tink. I think she means we need to figure out what the heck is going on here. My thoughts exactly. So the groups all explained what the others were doing and how they were trying to arrive at the Green Peace Club at the same time. Tiger Lily even excused the Darling Boys for littering, since they were new to Neverland. They didn't know. But now we know, so we won't do it again. They realized they were all on the same side of things and enjoyed the Green Peace Club together. They drank some peppermint tea. Mmm, refreshing. I grew the peppermint leaves myself in my garden. They did some yoga. I feel so centered. Whoa. Oh. Oops. They watered some plants. This is an echinacea plant. Good to keep you healthy. Cool. And this is lemon balm. Reduces anxiety. Oh, that's good for me. I'm a little, some might say, high strung. Tiger Lily sang everyone a peaceful song. The bear went over the mountain, the bear went over the mountain, the bear went over the mountain. They took a nap under the shade of the trees. Ah, this is the life. Yeah, the sun is shining. Ah, and I'm sleepy. Ooh, not a care in the world. Wendy? Over here! Help! Wendy, what happened? I was climbing, and I was stretching, and I was parkouring. And you fell off? Yeah, I think I'm okay. I don't think it's broken. Ouchie! Oh man, we gotta get you back to the bunker, and fast. You can take my wagon, and Wendy can ride in that. Thanks, Tiger Lily, but I got a better idea. Wendy, hop on. Oh boy. Let's fly. Wee! Peter, don't drop me. Don't worry, I got ya. Hey, looks like those stinking pirates are finally leaving the shore. See you later, alligators. Don't taunt them, Tank. Ah, uh, they can't hear us. Right, pirates? Huh? Did you guys hear that? No, dude, relax. You're always so worried. But... Yeah, just embrace the chill island life. But, but it sounded like a bird, or a plane, or a fairy. But the thing was, the pirates were not leaving the shore. That's right, kids. This wasn't the last time Peter and her buddies would see the pirates. <gasps> huh? So the gang was flying fast as lightning toward the home under the ground so they could save Wendy's life. Whoa, 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 that's a little dramatic. It's just a busted leg. She'll be fine after the scouts take care of her. 
Who are you talking to, Peter? Uh, no one. According to my calculations, we are four hairs past a freckle away. Huh? Meaning, we're almost there. Good, because my back is starting to ache. Oh, sorry, Peter. Oh, not to worry. Anything for a friend. And meanwhile, the scouts were looking all over the home under the ground for Peter. Remember, they went back there to get help for the Darling Boys. Where could Pan be? We are really going to need her help if we are going to save the Darling Boys. Uh, guys? What if she never comes back? Hello, guys. Oh, man. We should start gathering our food and making rations. You guys, look. Hey, guys. Incoming. Oh, my booty. Quick, guys. Wendy you needs your help. Oh, no, Mother. You're hurt. We can help you, Mother. Right this way, Mother. We, we got, got you, Mother. Oh, oh, my. Thank you. Is she going to be okay? Will your medicine taste nasty, like the one our mommy gives us for a cough? Oh no, Michael. She won't even need any medicine. Yeah, we're going to patch this leg up. Look at his split. I'll get a piece of wood and make a split. And I'll get ribbon to tie it tight. And I'll get a chocolate ice cream sundae. Won't that be a little messy? Oh, John, you silly goose. It's not for her leg, just a little snack. Right. The scouts made quick work of fixing up Wendy's leg. After some wrapping, stitching, welding, and ice cream eating, Wendy was as good as new. Wow, thanks guys. I feel like a million bucks. And bonus, I don't know if you scouts realize this, but because of this incident, you all earned your first aid and medicine merit badges. Yeah! Hey Wendy, I'll bet you can fly better than ever now. You think? I know. Tink, hit her with a little fairy glitter. You got it, dude. Ah, uh, Tink? I, I swear I had another one in here. Another what? Tink, come on, we want to see Wendy fly. Uh, Pan, I think we have bigger fish to fry. My spare bag of glitter is... Is, is filled with glitter to keep this fun going? Uh... No, it's missing! What did you do this? Guys, it's true. I'm all out of fairy glitter. I'll bet that crooked Captain Hook stole it when we were busy saving Tiger Lily. You're right. Tink, what's wrong? It's her powers and her energy. She's getting weaker by the second. I feel weird. Pan, you gotta do something. She needs her fairy glitter. Otherwise, she gets really weak. What are we gonna do? Well, there's one thing. If everybody claps, then we'll show her that people still believe in fairies. Of course we believe in fairies. Well, sometimes people lose their faith and Tink needs a little encouragement. Quick, Pan, I'm fading. And all of you out there, if you believe in fairies all together, I need you to clap your hands. Please. Please, for my bestie, clap your hands so Tink can hear you. Sorry to interrupt this really important moment, but I just needed to tell you Captain Hook did steal Tinkerbell's fairy glitter. Yup, I stole right from under her nose. Urgh. Captain, that's aggressive. Well, you gotta be aggressive if you want to get your way. I guess. And I want my special glove back from Pan. And I knew if I took that fairy's magical pouch of glitter, Pan would surely come back for it. Peter Pan certainly does seem to be a loyal friend. She's kind of always saving her friends. Ha-ha! I'll use that loyalty to trap her. Oh, boy. Come on, you guys. Clap! Clap! Please. Clap! Clap if you believe in fairies! I believe in you, Tink. I believe in magic. See, Tink, everybody loves you. We believe in fairies. Do you believe in magic? Tell me you believe. I believe. I'm feeling stronger and stronger. Clap a little bit more. I'm back, people. Thank you. See, people still do believe in magic. Magic is all around us. I love it. But this won't last long. We really got to get to Hook's ship to get my glitter. We'll stay in the bunker in case Hook shows up here. 
We'll come with you, Pan. I'm ready to fight for your honor, Tink. <laughs> this better work, because this is my last handful of fairy glitter. Let's go! Good luck! The group flew fast as lightning toward the pirate ship. You need to prepare yourself for battle, peeps. Yeah, those pirates are strong, but we're stronger! We can do this. Aha, see that? They're still by the shore. We gotta make a sneak attack. We'll follow your lead, Pan. Okay, shh, we gotta do this very quietly. Look, I see Smee and Bob and the others. What, what are they doing? Are they? Is that nail polish? Spa day. Ah, soft as a rabbit's booty. I love that mint green color. It brings out my eyes. Hold still. I'm trying to clip these toenails. Gross. When is the last time you did this? Mm, nasty. Count us in, Peter. Okay, here we go. We pounce on three. Like on three or after you say three? On my count of three. So when you say three? <sighs> ah, here we go. One, two, three. <laughs> What's happening? Put up your deuce, me. Uh-oh. This is not going to be good. We won't hurt you if you take us to your leader. Oh, the little fairy is scary. You have no idea. I may look tiny, but I'm mighty. I believe you. Just don't hurt me. Dude, you guys are pirates. Aren't you supposed to be a little bit more, like, bloodthirsty or something? Now might not be a good time to say this, but I really don't like being mean. Ugh, where is my bag of fairy glitter? Ha ha ha, I knew this bag of dumb old glitter would lure you back to my ship. Peter Pan can never turn down a chance to help a friend. Ha ha, gotcha. Ugh, he used my kind heart against me. Birds. Pan, give us the word. Suddenly, Pan and Hook were cornered face to face. Give us back the fairy glitter. Never! You, you codfish! Then give me back my glove. Huh? My special glove. The one my grandma made me when I was a little boy to protect my hook and do piratey things. Whoa, this got heavy. Um, this glove? Are you kidding me? Sorry, boss. I didn't know this was the glove you were looking for. I've been using it to hold all the fish I catch. Oh, I'll never get that stench out of my glove. Bob! Do you want him to walk the plank, sir? Yes! Plank! 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 plank. plank. Oh, man! Oh, man! Here goes nothing! Huh? What? I wasn't going to let one of me men drown. Just teaching him a little lesson. Let's all go! So, uh, Hook, the fairy glitter? I already snuck it back into Tink's pouch. Huh? Aw, oh, thanks! You know, this has been a lot of fun, but I kind of feel like it's time to go home. Sure, we can head back to the home under the ground. No, Peter. I mean our home, not in Neverland, where our parents are, and Nanny, our own beds. Oh, um, I thought we had more time together. Like, I kind of thought forever. Well, we def can be friends forever. I miss my mommy, too. Would you mind taking us back, Peter? Sure, yeah. That's what friends are for, right? Second star to the right and straight on till morning. Tell the scouts thank you for everything. And Tiger Lily and the Greenpeace Club to keep on protecting the land. And tell the mermaids we'll come play bubble ball with them soon. This was a great adventure. I'll miss you, darlings. I really don't like goodbyes, so how about see you later? 
See, See you, you later. later. Until next time, off to Neverland. Good night, boys. Good, Good night, night, Wendy. Wendy. Good morning, my darling darlings. Wendy, are you ready for your math test today? Huh? Wasn't that like months ago? Silly Wendy, of course not. We were just talking about it last night. But haven't we been in Neverland for so long? I'm not quite sure, but something magical definitely happened. The best parts of being a fairy. The first cool thing about being a fairy? Yeah. Hiding in small places. Remember when I got stuck in that drawer? <laughs> that was crazy, but it was okay, because us fairies are tiny, so we can squeeze and fit in the most random of spots. Try me. How about a clamshell? Easy. See? Hmm. Can you fit inside a water bubble? Easy breezy. Oops. Sorry. That's okay. Next cool thing about fairies, we actually don't mind the dark. Ready, Zoro? Uh-oh. Where are we? Well, this is why fairies don't mind the dark. Our glitter wings are like a flashlight. Cool. Okay, while we're here in the woods, I want to tell you about the next cool thing about being a fairy. Is it this? Huh? Where did you even find that little guy? Let him go. Oops. Sorry. No, 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 Zoro. But that is actually kind of close. Us fairies use nature to make music. Like sticks and rocks and leaves? Yep. Watch this. Wow, I never knew fairies were so resourceful. Oh yeah, resourceful is my middle name. It is? No, it's Agatha, but still. So is there one more thing you got up your sleeve? You mean other than fairy glitter? Oh boy, here we go again. Oh yes, here we do go again. Because this is the final thing on my awesome list of cool things about being a fairy. Scaring your friends? No, dude. Flying. Right. That's pretty much what us fairies are most known for. Flying. Come on, Zoro. Give it your best shot. <sighs> okay. Whoa. This is fun. Told ya. I feel like an honorary fairy. You totally are, Zoro. Well, I hope you had fun learning more about fairies. And did you guys like learning about fairies? Yeah! Cool. I'm super scary. It's okay, I'm super brave. Ah! Uh, sorry, I was, um, I was just screaming at something else. I thought I saw a bat. There's nothing here to be scared of. I promise. What's the deal with these invisible servants? Long story. They're not ghosts, are they? No. Oh, phew, that's good. I'm scared of ghosts. Hi kids, welcome to Storytime at Cool School with me, Miss Booksy. Today, we're reading Beauty and the Beast. Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Once upon a time, there was a girl named Belle Rose, but everyone just called her Belle. Hi. <laughs> Belle lived in a small village with her father, one sister, and one brother. Her father was very nice, but her sister and brother, not so nice. I'm not sure why they were so mean. They just were, and they were always fighting. Uh, <laughs> taking things that didn't belong to them. And making up ridiculous fibs. I didn't take your book, Belle. A ninja broke into the house and stole your book. No, uh I saw her take it. Nuh-uh. Wow, that is so mean. So yeah, <laughs> but it was okay. As I said, my dad was the nicest dad ever in the history of daddom. <laughs> One day, he got me a puppy for like, no reason. 
My dad had lots of ships that went all over the world selling stuff. That's how he could afford to buy us fancy clothes and jewelry and stuff. But one day, it went all down the drain. <laughs> one very bad hurricane and my dad lost everything. Well, he lost the ships and the jewelry and the fancy clothes, but he still had us. It's okay, kids. We're still together and that's what matters. Yeah, family. Aw, that is so nice. But Belle's brother and sister were not happy. They thought being rich mattered more than anything. Anyway, let's move the story along. It's called Beauty and the Beast, not Beauty and her sister and brother. <laughs> one day, Belle's dad found out that an old ship had drifted into the harbor. It has to be one of my ships, kids. I just know it. Yay, we're rich again. Presents. Yes, presents for everyone. What would you like? I want a pony and a new dress and a tiara. I want a new bike and a new dog. And you, Belle, what would you like? Just one red rose from the flower market. A rose for my Belle Rose. Boring. So basic. So off Belle's dad went, whistling a happy tune. La 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 la, everything's great. But when he got to the harbor, he saw that the mystery ship was just an old pirate ship with nothing but a couple of parrots and a rusty old hook on board. He headed back home, whistling a sad tune. La, 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 la. Everything's not great. That is so sad. And then as if things weren't bad enough for poor old Belle's dad, it started to rain. Hard. Oh, hey, a castle. I bet it's nice and warm in there. Hello? Hello? Is anyone home? The castle was dark and very quiet. He slept like a baby all through the night, and when he woke, he found that someone had made him breakfast. Hello? Hmm. Must be from the breakfast fairy. The breakfast fairy is just like the tooth fairy, by the way. But instead of money, she leaves you breakfast. And you don't even have to give her one of your teeth. Wow, that is so cool. Well, that was delicious. Better be on my way. He was just about to leave the castle when he saw a perfect red rose. Just like the one Belle wanted. What do you think you're doing? Ah! Ah, a beast! Nothing, I was just leaving. You come into my castle, sleep by my fire, eat my food, and now you steal from me? To be fair, I thought that food was left by the breakfast fairy. Breakfast fairy? There's no such thing as a breakfast fairy. Oh, really? Uh, really? I'm so, so sorry. My daughter Belle wanted a red rose, and I saw this and it's perfect. A perfect rose for my perfect girl. I'm really sorry. I'll make a deal with you. Okay. You may go and take this rose to your daughter. Okay. But she must return and work for me. Okay. Wait. No. It's either that or you stay here forever. But my kids, they won't know where I've gone. I, I can't stay. Then send me Belle. Oh no, this doesn't look good. Chapter two, here we go. Belle's dad had left the castle with the rose, but he didn't know what to do. Could he really send his daughter to work for this beast? Surely not, but what could he do? I'll go back and I'll fight him. Stand back, beast. I'm here to defeat you. Maybe not. I know, I'll send a decoy. He must be Belle. No, he'd never fall for it. It's useless. He arrived home, still not sure what to do. How are they ever gonna get out of this one? Dad, I was so worried about you. Where's my bike? Where's my pony? Their dad explained that there would be no pony and no new bike. It's okay, Dad, I'm just glad you're home. Oh, Belle, I did bring you a rose. It's lovely. Did you get it at the market? It's way prettier than usual. Interesting story, actually. He explained the whole beast situation. When he was done, Belle and her siblings looked like this. I'm not going to work for a stinky beast. Me either, no way, gross. Of course not, we'll figure this out. I'll go. Great, that settles it. See ya, Belle. Belle, no, you can't. If I don't go, he'll come find you, and then what? I'll go, I'll work, and then I'll come home. No big deal. And so it was settled. Belle would go to the beast. Oh no, I hope they'll be okay. Hello? Hello?
Mr. Uh, sir? Oh, dinner is at seven. Hmm. Okay, so like, am I supposed to cook dinner? Is that my job? I guess I better find the kitchen. But when she found the kitchen, she saw that someone had already begun dinner. It smells good. So maybe I'm to set the table. But in the dining room, the table had already been set. Well, I guess I'll just sit here and wait for dinner. Whoa, how'd the food get in here? I didn't see anyone bring it in. Now where's that feast? I'm hungry. Okay, that's it. I'm digging in. I guess I'm eating alone. <laughs> then Belle realized that she was not alone at all. What? Magic. That's so magical. So cool. But wait, if this place has magic invisible servants, then what's my job? And where's that beast? Any answers for me, invisible butler man? Alrighty then, I think I'll take a tour of the grounds. Belle thought the castle was the most beautiful place she had ever seen, but her favorite part was the garden. These are the most perfect roses in the whole world. I wonder if the beast enters them into flower shows. He'd win for sure. I better not touch them though. That's what got me into this mess. Apparently the beast really likes his flowers. You can touch them if you want. Ah! Don't be scared. Oh. Sorry, you just startled me. Are you, um, the... The beast? Yes. Come out of the shadow so I can see you. Okay, but I have to warn you. I'm super scary. It's okay. I'm super brave. Ah! Uh, sorry. I was, um, I was just screaming at something else. I thought I saw a bat. It's okay. I know what I look like. Let's try this again. I'm Belle. Hi. I'm the beast. Hello. Oh, so he's actually nice underneath. Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter three, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Beast? Is that your real name? No, my real name is Sam. Oh, well, hi, Sam. So what's the deal with these invisible servants? Long story. They're not ghosts, are they? No. Oh, phew. That's good. I'm scared of ghosts. There's nothing here to be scared of, I promise. Okay. Question two. If you have magical invisible servants, then what do you need me for? You'll be my personal assistant. Hmm, that sounds cool. Belle Rose, executive personal assistant. I'll probably need a business card. <laughs> I'll have Gustav show you a room. Good night, Belle. Whoa, this place is crazy. Has the invisible guy been here the whole time? Uh, boy, this is gonna take some getting used to. Belle followed invisible Gustav to her new room. It was pretty amazing. This is amazing. Belle's bedroom had a huge bed with like a hundred little fancy pillows. There was a princess canopy, a giant chandelier, and only about a thousand books. Princess and the Pea, nice. Cinderella, one of my faves. Sleeping Beauty, a classic, but I'd like it better if the main character were awake more. She snoozes through like the whole book. <laughs> know what I mean, Gustav? You still there, Gustav? Okay, well, Gustav, I think I'm gonna turn in right now. That is amazing. Thank you very much, nice invisible people. <laughs> All right, well, I'm gonna go to bed now. Good night. <laughs> see you in the morning. I mean, not see you. You know what I mean. <laughs> I should write my dad a letter before bed. <laughs> He'll want to know how things are going. <gasps> Dear dad, what a day. The beast is not at all what I expected. I thought he'd be all growly and snarly and mean, but so far he seems pretty nice. The food here is very good. <laughs> oh, and get this. All the butlers and maids are invisible. I don't know why, but Sam assures me that they're not ghosts. Anyway, I'm sure you're worried about me, but I'm really doing okay. Love always, Belle. <laughs> oh, P.S. The beast's real name is Sam, by the way. <laughs> Belle was right. Her dad was very worried about her. That's so sad.
It was hard for him to have his sweet daughter so far away and living with a scary beast, no less. Poor Belle. I just hope she's okay. I'm sure she's fine. So she lives with a scary monster, so what? Yeah, no big deal, Dad. It's all my fault. The next day, Belle woke bright and early, excited <sighs> to start her new job. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> Okay, Sam, what's on the agenda for today? Stocks? Bonds? Monthly reports? Number crunching? I was thinking we'd just go for a hot air balloon ride. A hot air balloon ride? Yeah, that sounds like fun, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Belle and the Beast spent their first full day together flying around in a hot air balloon just talking and getting to know each other. Well, mostly Belle talked. So yeah, my brother and sister are kind of annoying, but they're family. What are you gonna do? <laughs> do you have brothers and sisters? No. Do you have parents? No. Any family at all? No. Oh, so sad. Family's very important. At least you have your health. <laughs> and a castle. <laughs> your hair is also very nice. Do you use conditioner? I use coconut oil in my hair sometimes. It's very moisturizing and it smells delish. Do you have any coconut oil? It's very nutritious. What in the heck is that? It's a hot air balloon, you dingbot. Yeah. But what about a furry dude riding in it? Say, that looks like a monster. I don't like monsters. Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter four. Here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Happily floating along when suddenly... What was that? Someone shot at our balloon. Oh, no. Oh, we're going down. Oh. Hold on, Belle. <sighs> there they are. Get him! Belle, stand back! All right, doggy, say. I'm not a dog. He can talk? Of course I do. I'll try not to use big words so you can understand me. Okay, just get back now. Girl, you better come with us. This ugly butt looks dangerous. Wow, that is so mean. Back up now or we'll shoot. That was so scary. Are you okay? I'm fine. Aw. Look, you scratched your paw. It's okay, I'm fine. Yes, okay. <laughs> well, I guess we're walking back then? Yeah. Belle and the Beast walked back toward the castle. Belle had a feeling that the Beast was a little embarrassed. She certainly wouldn't appreciate being called an ugly mutt. Gee, <laughs> nothing like being shot out of the sky by a couple of huntsmen to ruin your day, huh? <laughs> Thanks for protecting me, Sam. <laughs> no problem, Belle. I'm just glad it's over. But unfortunately, it wasn't over. The hunters had run back to their hunting lodge, where they told anyone who would listen all about the big, scary beast in the woods. I'm telling you, he's at least 10 feet tall. And hairy all over. And he had fangs. Huge fangs and claws. Huge claws. He looked like he was half wolf, half bear. But this guy was me. Yeah, and he had a lady with him. We have to go back and save a lady. Yeah! Uh-oh. This doesn't sound good. Luckily for the beast, his castle was miles and miles and miles away from the hunting lodge. It would take ages for the gang of hunters to find it. But speaking of miles and miles, he and Belle were still walking back and Belle's feet were starting to hurt. How much longer till we get back to your castle? Here, jump on my back. Giddy up! <laughs> the beast took off and he was fast. Like a cheetah! <laughs> Everything went by in a blur. And in no time at all, the beast and Belle were back at the castle, safe and sound for now. <sighs> that was almost more fun than the hot air balloon. <laughs> now, let's get your paw bandaged. Turns out the beast was a big baby when it came to boo-boos. There, <laughs> all better. <laughs> and you only cried a little. I did not cry. Sure, okay. I didn't. Aw, that's so sweet. You know what would be nice right now? Hot cocoa. Gustav, can we have some hot cocoa? Gustav isn't here. Well, it's kind of hard to tell. Gustav! Gustav, could you make us some hot cocoa? Ooh, with the tiny marshmallows on top, please. With tiny marshmallows, please, Gustav. He should wear a bell around his neck. When do I get to hear the story about your invisible butlers and maids? In time, Belle. In time.
Cheers, Belle. Cheers, Sam. <laughs> it was cozy and peaceful in the castle, but outside, somewhere far away in the dark woods, the gang of hunters were searching for the beast. Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter five, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Belle and the beast were having some hot cocoa, super cozy and safe. But deep in the woods, the hunters were on the prowl. They were acting big and tough and saying what they were gonna do to the beast when they found him. I'm gonna tie him up and I'm gonna sell him to the zoo. I'm gonna feed him to our pet alligator. You have a pet alligator? No, but that'd be cool, right? Yeah. Oh yes, they were big and brave, weren't they? Wait, I'll hear something. <laughs> <laughs> that was hilarious. Yes, very brave indeed. The next morning, Belle decided she would do something nice for the beast to say thanks for saving her from the hunters. Good morning! Huh? <laughs> Breakfast in bed. I made pancakes. Oh, I like the little smiley face. You should smile more. We'll have to work on that. And Belle did. She made it her top priority to make the beast castle a cheerful place. To the left. Little more. No, back to the right. Perfect. <laughs> he brought home a pet kitten, which wasn't so great at first. <coughs> but they got used to each other. I think I'll name him Scruffles. Oh, so cute. And she made the beast laugh with her hilarious impressions of Gustav. Huh? Gustav! Gotcha! It was me the whole time! I just pulled this string! Oops. My bad. Belle and Sam's favorite thing to do together was just sit by the fire and read. It was so peaceful and cozy. But it was also during these quiet moments that Belle thought about her dad and how much she missed him. <sighs> You all right? What? Oh, yeah. Good. But things weren't so good back at Belle's house. Please, go to Belle and tell her to come home. I must see her. I'm, I'm not, not going. I'm not going. Jinx. jinx. Double, Double jinx. jinx. Let's flip for it. Heads. It's tails. Sorry. Ugh. Belle, I can't thank you enough. For what? Scruffles? Yeah, he's pretty cute. <laughs> no, I mean, thank you for everything. You just make everything nice. Yay, I'm so happy. Well, you're welcome, and thank you. I thought I was gonna hate it here, no offense. <laughs> I, I just, well, you know, but I really do like it. I mean it. But do you mind if I ask you something? What? What happened here? I mean, you live out here all alone, you have invisible butlers and maids, and you're, um, different. I'm cursed, Belle. Okay, you're being dramatic. It's true, I'm cursed. I'll always be cursed. Really? Like, a real curse? But that's fairy tale stuff, come on, just tell me what really happened. I don't want to talk about it. <coughs> I'm sorry, but I... I don't want to talk about it. Good night. Okay. What do you think, Scruffles? Think we can break the spell? What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter six, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Next day, Belle's brother set out for the Beast Castle. He was so not used to nature. I think I mentioned this before, but he was kind of spoiled. I hate this. I'm hungry. Oh, a hunting lodge? I bet they have snacks. Hey, you guys have any steak tartare? Just kidding. I'll take a giant turkey leg. Belle's brother was also quite nosy, so he immediately began eavesdropping. He listened to a conversation between some hunters. Yep, those hunters. I'm telling you, the beast was this tall. I know, Harry. You already told me the story. And we're gonna find him one of these days. Yeah, yeah, sure. But Bill's brother didn't think too much of it. Ugh, boring macho hunters. Check, please. What do you think is gonna happen next? Back to his journey through the dark, scary woods. He still didn't like it. Ew, 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 I don't like this. It's cold, it's wet, it's dark, and it's naturey. 
That's it. I'm turning around and I'm going home. No trespassing ever. Beware of beast. Oh, this must be it. What? This place is huge. I didn't know the beast was rich. Cool. Can I help you? Ah, beast, Bell, help, help. Hey, what are you doing here? This is my brother. <laughs> oh, nice to meet you. So sorry for growling. Bell, dad's sick. He wants you to come home. No, you can't. I have to, it's my dad. I know, I'm sorry. Is he very ill? I guess. Oh, poor dad. Oh no, I hope he'll be okay. Well, you can't go now. It's way too late. You're right, we'll go in the morning. Bill's brother was actually pretty excited to stay a night at the Beast's castle. You know, now that he knew he was rich, he made himself right at home. Ah, uh, I miss being rich. Bill, ask that invisible dude to get me some shrimp. We don't have any shrimp. Whatever. A guy could get used to this. Bell and the Beast, however, were not so carefree. I'm going to miss you. I'll miss you too. Honest? Yes. Okay, you'll miss each other, blah, 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 boring. The next morning, the Beast was even sadder. Bell could tell because he didn't even touch his breakfast and he usually ate like a dozen eggs. <laughs> Finally, it was time to go. Um, like, do you have a carriage or something for us? Or do we have to walk all the way back? You can use mine. Nice. It's beautiful, thank you. But you have to bring it back, Belle. Promise? Sam, I'll come back. Don't worry. <clears throat> we probably need some money too. Like in case we need gas or something. This is a horse-drawn carriage. Yeah, but like, what if we get a flat tire? Here. Thanks. And for you, Belle. Thank you. Giddy up. Bye, Sam. Goodbye, Belle. What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter seven, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. The beast was lonely. He puttered around the house in his pajamas and made noises like this. I'm so lonely. <laughs> Yeah, he wasn't doing so great. Belle, on the other hand, was so happy to see her dad again. Dad, oh, I miss you so much. I'm gonna make you some of my famous chicken foot soup. <laughs> It'll whip you right into shape. But Belle wasn't all smiles. She missed her friend. I wonder what old Sam is up to right now. <sighs> that is so sad. Anyway, while Belle had missed her dad, she realized she hadn't really missed her siblings at all. Uh, Belle, we didn't think you were coming back, so we put all your stuff in storage. Except for the good stuff, we kept that. We get to keep it, finders keepers. You understand. Sure, guys, whatever. <laughs> What's wrong with you? You look all blah. Have you been crying because you miss your hairy beast friend? Oh, Belle has a boyfriend, Belle has a boyfriend. He's not my boyfriend, he's just my friend. You should marry him, he is rich. He's rich? OMG whiz, he's so rich, uber rich, like he probably has a gazillion dollars. Good thing he's a giant beast, that way no one will rob him. <laughs> he looks like his own guard dog. Wow, that is so mean. Suddenly, Belle's brother remembered something. That's it. What? When I was looking for the beast castle to bring back Belle, I stopped in a hunting lodge. Ew. I know. Anyway, I overheard these hunter guys talking about finding and capturing a beast. So? Well, we could tell them where he is, and then we can take all his rich stuff. The two started plotting their super mean, some might even say evil, scheme. Can we help you, Sonny? You've been looking for a beast? I know where he is. Where? That'll cost you, and we're gonna need some help. The hunters promised to pay Belle's brother once he took them to the beast, but first, they needed a mob. Get him! Who here wishes to foil the odious beast? Huh? He means to say, who wants to go get that beast? Say I. Oh. Well, grab your pitchforks and let's go. Well, that was easy. And off the angry mob went to attack poor, lonely Sam. Oh no, I hope he'll be okay. Gustav, bring me more herbal tea and ice cream. Gustav, I'm in despair. <laughs> huh? 
What's that? Belle? Belle! Is that you? Oh, she's come back. Gustav, make that one ice cream two spoons. Belle, I'm so glad you... Ah! Uh, I mean... Roar. There he is! Get him! <gasps> Something's wrong. I can feel it. What? Go back to sleep. No! Sam's in trouble. Sam who? The beast! Oh, yeah. The hunters are capturing him so we can take all his rich stuff. Oh, no. This doesn't look good. Chapter 8, here we go. What do you mean the hunters are going to get him? Our brother is showing the hunters where he lives, and then he's going to take all the rich stuff. No! Yes! Now, shh! Go back to sleep. But Belle could not go back to sleep. She had to save the beast. I have to go save Sam. Okay, night-night. Belle had never gone on a rescue mission before, but she bravely went out into the night to save her best friend. Good thing I still have Sam's carriage. Giddy up, horsey! Back at the Beast Castle, the hunters had tied up Sam. Normally, he would have fought back, but he was so brokenhearted that he could barely lift a paw. Haha, <laughs> Beast, we got you. Not so tough now, are ya? <laughs> Belle! What? Belle's my sister. You'll never see her again, you mongrel. Oh no, this doesn't look good. But he would see Belle again because there she was. She ran to the back of the castle where Gustav and the rest of the staff slept. Our girl had a plan. Now, what are we gonna do with the beast? I'll say we put him in prison. I say we put him in the zoo. I say you let him go. Now! Oh yeah? What are you gonna do? This! Suddenly, one of the hunters was swept off his feet into the air and then he landed on his tushy. Owie! Huh? Get out of here, Belle. Ow! What is it, brother? Ugh, I'm getting pinched by something. Ouch! Oh, that's just Gustav. Gustav? Where? Ouch, make him stop. Oh, stop. And that's the rest of the castle staff. <laughs> What's happening? Yeah, I don't really know the whole backstory, but these guys are invisible, and I think you ticked them off. Yay, magic to the rescue. Okay, this is pretty hilarious, Gustav, but it's time to get these baddies tied up. No way! Yes way! Ow! Nice! High five! Okay, I guess Gustav left the room. Sam, are you okay? Belle, is that you? It's me, Sam. You came back. I promised I would. You're hurt. Is that a tear? Sorry! <laughs> what the what? What is it, Belle? You're, uh, I mean, is that you? I'm back! Woohoo! Gustav! Okay, what's going on here? Belle, I was cursed by a witch a long, long time ago. A witch? She must have been very wicked. Yes, well, I was mean to her first. She was hungry and cold, and I wouldn't help her. So she turned me into a beast, made all of my staff invisible and mute cursing me to a life of loneliness. Classic witch curse. I had given up all hope, and then you came along. Your friendship saved me. Yay, I'm so happy. But why did it take so long for the curse to break? I was your friend before I left. Your tears must have proved how much you care. Oh, Belle. Oh, Sam. Ah, oh, so mushy. Oh, can it, Gustav? I forgot how sassy he is. And that's the story of how Belle defeated the bad guys and broke the beast's curse, turning him back into a dashing prince. Their happy friendship would last forever and ever and ever and ever through all of time. The end. Oh, I just love happy endings. Thanks for coming to Storytime. See you next time. Bye. Hey everyone, welcome to Sweets Cafe. He always has the best stories and he's an amazing chef. I can't wait to hear what he's gonna tell us about today. Welcome to Sweets Cafe. The tale of Sleeping Beauty and the Superberry Pancakes and Groovy Smoothie. Oh, oh no! Uh, what did you do to me? Watch, you've never been cursed before? Here's how it works. Oh no, I'm getting...
getting sleepy. Good morning, everyone. Hi, Rosie. You're here just in time. Before everyone gets here and the madness begins. This is what it's like before the madness? There's so many people here at the cafe. What can I say? People love having a sweet, licious breakfast before they start their day. It's my famous super berry pancakes and groovy smoothies. Perfect to wake up to. Worked for Sleeping Beauty. The Sleeping Beauty? Yeah, you know her? The Sleeping Beauty that got cursed by a witch to one day fall asleep and never wake up? That's right. But then she woke up thanks to my super berry pancakes and groovy smoothie. That's not what happened. She woke up because a prince kissed her. She woke up from a prince's kiss? Seriously? A kiss? Yeah, he barely kiss. Knew her. No, it was definitely my super berry pancakes and groovy smoothie that woke Sleeping Beauty up. Who, by the way, didn't let anyone else sleep because what she loved most of all was playing her drums. She was a drummer? This is gonna be good. Are you ready? Let's go! Pound the table, clap your hands, off we go to magic lands. Stir the batter, lick the spoon, hold on tight, we'll be there soon! Once upon a time, there was a beautiful princess that loved to play the drums. Everyone in the kingdom loved her, even though nobody could ever get a good night's sleep. She kind of looks like me. Now that you mention it, she does look a little bit like you. One day, it was almost time for the princess's birthday, and she was going to have a huge party. Did you invite everybody, Dad? Of course, honey. Are you sure you didn't forget anyone? I didn't forget anybody. And everybody is so happy and tired. I mean, excited. Very excited, dear. But that wasn't completely true. Everyone in the kingdom was invited, except for one person. I do not want to invite that mean lady who lives in the tower at the edge of town. Yeah, she's cooking in a giant cauldron and flying around on a broomstick and always picking her nose. And then she eats it. Something about her just gives me the creeps. Oh, that lady wasn't just any old lady. She was a sorceress. That's kind of like a witch, but way scarier. I can't believe everyone in the kingdom is invited to that birthday party except for me. They'll be sorry. Very, very sorry. <laughs> when the day of the party came, everyone was having a great time. This is so much fun. <laughs> Quiet, everybody. And now the moment you've all been waiting for. <laughs> Princess's royal solo. Hopefully, it will be brief. Oh no. Uh, Who's ready to rock? Um. Let's rock and roll, baby. Done. Oh, I think she's done. Wow. I've come to crash this party and put a curse on your beloved princess. Oh, oh no! Uh, what did you do to me? What, you've never been cursed before? Here's how it works. One day, you'll prick your finger. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but it will happen. And when it does, you will fall fast asleep. <laughs> that doesn't sound so bad. This isn't just any sleep. It's a cursed sleep. And you won't wake up ever again. <laughs> Tootaloo and sweet dreams, sleeping beauty. <laughs> That's awful. But what if the princess is very careful that she doesn't get pricked by something? She just needs to make extra super duper sure that she doesn't touch anything sharp. Yeah, the king and queen thought that too. So they decided that if they stopped the princess from touching anything sharp, they would be able to stop the spell from happening. So sorry, my dear. No more running outside. Blades of grass have edges. And no more playing ball. What? It's a ball. It's round. It doesn't have any points. Better safe than sorry, and no more playing the drums with sticks. What? How can I play drums without sticks? Here, my love, put these on. There we have it. This should protect you. Ugh, what use is being awake if I can't do anything fun? After that day, the king commanded to get rid of all the drumsticks in his kingdom. 
The only thing they allowed the princess to do was take piano lessons. What? Piano? But it's so... Do you prefer violin? No. Great! You will love it! Now, let's hear Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Yes, that's very good. Bravo! I could play a lot better without these oven mitts. Sorry, it's by the order of the king and queen. Keep practicing, and I'll see you next week. I just miss my drums so much. What's the worst that could happen? But where can I get two nice sticks? Hey, those branches look perfect. Let me just grab some and play a song real quick. The curse took effect, and the princess fell asleep. The king and queen found her and were totally heartbroken. Oh, no! Our daughter! They brought her back to her bed and tucked her in. Maybe one day some hero will wake her. But until then, if our princess is sleeping, then so shall we. Everybody in the kingdom was so tired from not being able to sleep for so long. So they all fell asleep just like Sleeping Beauty. Meanwhile, just outside the kingdom, I set up my food truck looking for hungry customers. Turned out to be pretty bad timing. Everyone was asleep, but one day somebody showed up. Greetings, I am Prince Charming, and I have heard tales of a beautiful maiden cast under a deep slumber by an evil enchantress. Huh? I've come to rescue Sleeping Beauty. Oh, great! Well, if you wake her up, she's going to be starving. Why don't you bring her something to eat? That's a great idea. Something sweet, please. Today's special is my famous super berry pancakes and groovy smoothie. Coming right up. Ta-da! She's going to love them. Ooh, don't forget the super sticky syrup. Good luck. Everything you need to save the day is in that bag. Thank you. And when she wakes up, Please give her this present from me. Will do. Uh, excuse me, my little monkey chef friend. Which way to the princess? That's easy. Just follow the noise. The noise? You'll see. Ooh, and also download my app, Noodle Maps, to your smartphone. Aha! That must be the noise. Will the prince be able to remove this spell and stop the evil sorceress? How does the princess wake up? All right. Back to the story. Oh, princess, princess, where are you? At last, I can hear you. I'm on my way. Hmm, let's see. Noodle Map says, At the fork in the road, go right. Okay, I will go to the right. Doesn't look too scary. Although it sounds a little scary. Whoa! Roar! Give me your money! Money? I don't have any money. Just kidding. I'm a lion. I don't need money. But I am pretty hungry. Sorry, buddy. I've got no food to give away. I'm... Okay, okay. I was just kidding, too. I've got some blueberry pancakes. You can have one. Whoa! From Sweets Cafe? You know Sweets? Of course! He's a legend! Gimme, gimme! Mmm, <laughs> so good! Okay, I'll let you pass without eating you. Thanks, I guess. Meanwhile, in the middle of the sleepy kingdom, Sleeping Beauty was continuing to snooze away. Pass me that basketball. Here, catch! What? No! Will the prince get there soon? It takes a while to find your way through a mystical forest. A faster route has been found. Hello. 
You can only cross my bridge if you answer my riddle. Ooh, I love riddles. It's not supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be scary. Oh, okay. Sorry. All right, here we go. What kind of cake can you eat for breakfast? And it's always round. You have three guesses. And if you're wrong, I'll cast a terrible spell on you. Ooh, that is scary. Hmm, okay. How about carrot cake? You could eat carrots for breakfast? Wrong! It's not always round. Try again. Err, um, round. What is round? (gasps) A wheel! A wheel of a car! That's not even a cake! Wrong again. You have one chance left. Uh Uh-oh. Um... (laughs) <laughs> it's nasty spell time. Pancake. Huh? Pancake. Oh, good thinking, Noodle. Maybe if I offer him a pancake, he'll let me go. Would you like a pancake? Ah, you solved it. A pancake is a cake you eat for breakfast, and it's round. Ha, now step aside, my little snaky friend. Speaking of pancakes, give me one. What? I solved the riddle. Look, I could still cast a spell on you if I wanted to. Just give me a pancake and I'll leave you alone. Fine. (laughs) Yum. Later. Wow, the snoring is so loud. I must be close. Thank you for your help, my trusty steed. Sure. Could I have a pancake? They look really good. If anyone deserves one, it's you. Wish me luck! <laughs> You're trespassing in my kingdom! This isn't your kingdom, it's Sleeping Beauty's! Somebody put a terrible curse on her and put her to sleep! Who do you think cursed her? It was me! And now I'll put you to sleep forever too! Hold on, I know how this works by now. Let's just skip all the threats and the riddles. You can have one of my pancakes and I'll be on my way. Pancakes? Yuck! I prefer waffles! Uh Uh-oh. Oh no! What do I do? Everything you need to save the day is in that bag! But she doesn't like pancakes, and the smoothie is for Sleeping Beauty. Don't forget the super sticky syrup. Of course! Hey you, sorceress lady, take this! Ah! It's so sticky! After the sticky sorceress, keep straight. Get back here, you! Ah! I found you. Maybe I better make this more romantic first. Only one pancake left. We'll just have to split it. You're awake! Yeah, how long was I out? It's been a long time. I came all this way to rescue you. I defeated the evil sorceress, and I brought some breakfast. Wow, my hero. I'm starved. (coughs) O-M-G! This is the best smoothie ever! Where did you get this? My friend Sweets made it. Whoa, he is my hero. What about me? Don't worry, you're a good tip. Oh, and Sweets wanted me to give you this present. Yay! Drumsticks? Perfect! The prince and Sleeping Beauty lived happily ever after. And you know what they always loved for breakfast? Superberry pancakes and my groovy smoothie. And everybody woke up thanks to Sleeping Beauty's super loud drumming. And they had never been so excited to hear her music. The end. Sweets, your cooking saved the day. It's the best way to wake up. What a great story. I'll bet Sweets has so many more. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any. Bye. Ow. What's the matter? You don't like dodgeball? I like dodgeball just fine, but we weren't playing dodgeball. You simply threw the ball at my head. 
Yeah, monster, run! Time at Cool School with me, Miss Booksy. Today we're reading Frankenstein Makes a Monster. Wiggle, snap, story time. Hi, I'm Mary Shelley Frankenstein, sister to the world's biggest mischief-making little brother, Victor Frankenstein. That's Dr. Frankenstein. He's not a doctor, obviously. He's ten. <laughs> ten and a half. Anyway, one day he was bored, and when Victor Frankenstein gets bored, bad things happen. For example, one time he filled all my shoes with slime! Ew! Victor! And then one time he put baking soda and vinegar in his teacher's coffee. And yeah, it exploded. Victor! And this one time, oh, this is really bad, he put glue on the toilet seat and my dad got stuck. Ah, Victor? So like I was saying, bored Victor equals bad Victor. And that's how the story begins. I'm bored. I want to make something. Something big, something bad, something epic. I know. Today I'm going to create a monster. Victor went down to his laboratory, aka our basement, and got to work. That's where he did all his experiments. Some fishing hooks, I can use those. Slinky, check. Some nuts and bolts and screws and stuff, sure. Modeling clay, finger paints, glue, grandpa's toupee, perfect. A garbage can, some brooms, a mop googly eyes, a couple of my sister's patriotic girl dolls, my old teddy bear, Mr. Teddy Puff Puff. Wait, no, I didn't mean it, Mr. Teddy Puff Puff. Promise. Forgive me? I love you too, Teddy. Aw, that's sweet. But don't be fooled. Victor was up to a seriously naughty scheme. Now back to my seriously naughty scheme. It's time to create my monster. A monster that will wreak havoc and destroy the whole world. <laughs> Oh no, don't be scared, Mr. Teddy Puff Puff. My monster won't destroy you. Now, time to work. Victor worked all day into the night, not even stopping for snack time. He snipped, ripped, chopped, glued, fastened, refastened, attached thingamabobs and whatchamacallits until finally he was satisfied. My monster! Now to bring him to life. It's alive! Okay, I thought that would work. It's alive? How do I turn this thing on? It's... It's... It's alive! <laughs> yes! And now we will unleash chaos onto the world! <laughs> oh, are you hungry? Let's see, what do monsters eat? There's some leftover meatloaf in here. It's really gnarly, so you might like that. Nom 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 nom. Okay, you get enough to eat yet? We have to go wreak havoc and chaos and stuff. Uh. Whoa, awesome! Hey, wait for me! Victor, you stop right there, young man. Who made this mess? My monster did it? Right, sure, a monster did it. Well, guess who's going to clean it up? Me? That's right. But... Oh, no buts. But there was a but. A big one. A real, live monster was on the loose. But really, he was probably more afraid than anyone. The world was brand new to him, and he couldn't help but be frightened. <gasps> Finally, he found a nice resting spot and fell asleep. Okay, so maybe it wasn't such a good resting spot because during recess, the jungle gym is a pretty happening spot. And it wasn't very long until... Ah! And that woke the monster. 
Arr! The monster felt a little bit safer in the woods. He sat there and watched the playground, waiting for the kids to leave. A bell rang and the kids left, but then an older group of kids came out, including me. Ow! What's the matter? You don't like dodgeball? I like dodgeball just fine, but we weren't playing dodgeball. You simply threw the ball at my head. See, that I don't like. Whatever, Mary Shelley Stinkenstein. That's not my name. Mary Shelley Stinkenstein. Mary Shelley Stinkenstein. Ah! Ah! Monster, run! Thank you for chasing away those bullies, but I have to ask, are you a nice monster or a mean monster? Okay, I'm going to take a wild, possibly dangerous guess and say that you seem like a nice monster. I'm Mary. Repeat after me. Monster. 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 Mon. Okay, that's pretty close. Now add the stir. Monster. Monster. Great. Okay, I should really teach you some more words, but that took like an hour, so let's move on to something else. How about some social skills? Let's try a handshake. Ah. Now we put our hands together and then we shake. Ah. Oh. 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 Ah. Okay, you're doing really great, but. Can you put me down? Oh, good. Thanks. All right, it's time for me to go home for dinner. Do you think you'll be okay here for tonight? <laughs> yeah, you better come with me. I'll hide you in my old playhouse. But by the time I got home and the monster was all settled in, news had gotten out. Reports of the mystery monster have been coming in all day from people like this gentleman. I nearly ran him over in my car last night. I don't know if my insurance would have covered that. And these innocent children. I was just minding my own business when he tried to hit me with a ball. City officials are urging citizens to stay inside and lock your doors. But some local vigilantes want to take matters into their own hands. Yeah, we're going to get that monster. I ain't afraid of no monster. Uh-oh. According to eyewitness reports, the monster has caused over $11,000 in damage, and an old-fashioned pitchfork and torch-wielding gang of locals has sworn to capture the beast. Yeah! yeah. Back to you, Chuck. Oh, dear! I told you it was the monster that wrecked the kitchen. Go to bed, Victor. Well, I couldn't just leave the monster outside in my old playhouse, not with a bunch of vigilantes out there hunting him. Shh, okay, you can sleep in here, but you have to be quiet. Aw, that's sweet. Now, do you want the top bunk or the bottom? Uh. Oh, you're not sleepy? Do you want to play a game? Uh. So we played some games. We played Twister, Right Foot Blue. Uh. Uh, close enough. Jenga, Jenga, Jenga. <laughs> then we went full on slumber party and did spa night. Ah! I thought I heard my monster in here. Your monster? Yeah, I created him in the basement. What's he doing with all that gunk on his face? We were having a spa night. What? Monsters don't do spa nights? Monsters are supposed to be ferocious and fierce and wreak havoc. He's not that kind of monster. I found him in the woods by the playground. He saved me from bullies, and now there are bullies looking for him. We have to protect our monster. Our monster? I think you mean my monster. He's coming with me. No way! Hey! Uh, uh. Hey, keep it down in there. Quick, hide the monster. What on earth is going on in here? Nothing, Mom. Yep, nothing to see here. Uh -uh. What was that? Uh, my stomach. I don't think that leftover meatloaf sat too well with me, but uh, I'll be okay. <laughs> okay, well, time for bed. Yes, Mom. Okay, Mom. Now. Uh. Meatloaf! You sure you're okay? Yep. <laughs> Good night. See ya mañana. 
Bye. Okay. Good night. Phew. That was close. <sighs> we can't keep him here. There's no way mom and dad will let us keep a monster. True. But we can't take him outside either. The vigilante bully gang is looking for him. What if they hurt him? But he's a monster. He could just destroy the gang. Easy peasy. You seem to be forgetting that he's not the destructive, dangerous type. He's a big sweet softy. Look. <laughs> yeah, I guess he's not going to wreak any havoc. Hey, I know. Let's take him to Professor Weirdly's house. She'll know what to do. Great idea. Science teachers for the win. <laughs> okay, now how do we get him out of here without attracting attention? Of course! Uh -huh. Perfect! Let's go! So we set out into the night with our monster. It was a little scary, but there's no time to fear when you're on a mission. Super brave, right? Well, that was all about to change. We didn't know it yet, but the vigilante gang was closing in. So all was going according to plan. We were on our way to see Professor Weirdly, the science teacher at our school. She would know what to do with the STEM project gone awry. Okay, cool. I can see Professor Weirdly's house. We're almost there. Is that what I think it is? Yep. What do we do now? Um, we could blast them with a giant water balloon or some other projectiles. Or we could just cast a protective force field around ourselves. Ooh, or we could sick a giant robot on them. Or we could run. That's always an option. Let's go. What do we have here? Oh, hi, sir. <laughs> nice weather we're having, huh? What are you kids doing out here this time of night? Who, us? Yes, you. We're just out for a little evening stroll. And you? I'm out looking for that monster that's been terrorizing the town. Oh, I haven't heard anything about that. Have you, Victor? No, Mary, not a word. A monster, you say? Who's that? Hmm? I said, who's that? Oh, her? Yes, uh, that's our grandma. Yep, <laughs> old granny. But don't bother trying to talk to her. She's hard of hearing. Uh, granny, we're just telling this nice pitchfork-wielding gentleman that you're a little hard of hearing. <laughs> uh, well, I guess it's our bedtime. Good night. Excuse us. <laughs> Oh, hi guys. We were just leaving. Come on, Granny. <laughs> Seemed too easy, right? We were just gonna walk away, but then suddenly we heard... Meow. <laughs> Come on, Gran. Time for bed. <laughs> yeah, that's a kitty. Let's go. But the monster, being a big old sweetheart, jumped <laughs> into the tree to rescue the kitten. Great. Wow, your Granny sure is spry. Hey, she saved the kitten. Okay, Granny, good job. Now let's go. Uh oh. That's him. That's the monster. Get him. The gang was all riled up, and things were getting very scary. One guy swung his pitchfork up at the monster. Ha! Ah, I'll get you. Uh. But he missed. Phew. <laughs> but then it landed. Ah! Hey, you stuck me. And that guy had been waving around a torch, so when he got poked with the pitchfork, he accidentally let another guy's pants on fire. Arr! It was chaos! Finally! We could have just run away at that point, but the monster was such a big old sweetie that he just had to jump down and help. Arr! Ah, that's better. Phew, thanks. Hey, wait, he's being nice. Monsters aren't nice. Well, this one is. He protected me from bullies. He rescued that kitten, and now he's helping you. Yeah, and I created him specifically to be a supervillain, too. I don't know what went wrong. So will you guys leave him alone now? Are you sure he's good? Look at him. <coughs> yeah, OK, we'll let you go. But you all better get home soon. It's late. We know, just one more stop. Come on, guys, let's go to Professor Weirdly's. And Victor, you say you made this all by yourself? Yep, awesome, right? Very impressive. Where will you keep him, Professor? I think he'll be happy at school. He can live in the lab. So from that night on, our monster lived in Professor Weirdly's science lab at the school. It 
was great. He took care of the class pets. He helped kids with their homework. Well, he tried anyway. He was the best school monster ever, and Victor and I got to see him every day. It was awesome. Yeah, but next time, I'll create a super bad monster that wreaks havoc and mayhem and destruction and, and... Oh boy, here we go. The end. Aw, so the monster got to live happily ever after. <laughs> I'm the trickiest trickster in town. And therefore, my fellow compatriots, in our time of being, we... <gasps> that sneaky little punk, Tricky Jack is the worst little trickster in the whole dang town. <gasps> that can't be right. Everyone knows I'm the trickiest trickster in town. I'm going to prove I'm the trickiest one there is. Jack can't beat me. I'm the tricky witch. Whoa, what's that? Hello, Jack. I have to warn you about something important. The Tricky Witch has heard about your pranks and wants to prove that she is the trickiest one in town. Impossible. I'm the trickiest trickster there is. You may be in major trouble. So? I'm always in trouble. You don't understand. The Tricky Witch will stop at nothing to prove that she is the trickiest one there is. The only way you can be safe from her is if you stop pulling pranks on people. Only then will she leave you alone. No way, angel food cake. Playing tricks is what I do. Hi, kids. Welcome to Storytime at Cool School with me, Miss Booksy. Today, we're reading the story of Jack-O-Lantern. Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Tricky Jack was known as the biggest prankster in town. He was always causing trouble, like drawing on the walls, jumping in the public pool, taking candy from the candy store. Oh no, Jack just took my whole stock of chocolate lollies. And tying people's shoes together. Oh, that's so not cool. <laughs> I'm the trickiest trickster in town. He even once pants the mayor. And therefore, my fellow compatriots, in our time of being, we... Sneaky little punk, Tricky Jack is the worst little trickster in the whole dang town. One day, Jack's antics caught the attention of a sneaky witch. Excuse me, what was it you just said about the trickiest person in town? Jack is the sneakiest little fellow there is, always pranking us and making us unhappy. <gasps> that can't be right. Everyone knows I'm the trickiest trickster in town. It's because I'm a witch. That's what we do. It's in the job description. And on that fall day on October 31st, the witch made a decision that will change Jack's life forever. Uh-oh, this doesn't sound good. I'm gonna prove I'm the trickiest one there is. Jack can't beat me, I'm the tricky witch. Later that day, Jack was walking on the trail back home when a mysterious figure approached him. Whoa. What's that? Hello, Jack. I have to warn you about something important. The Tricky Witch has heard about your pranks and wants to prove that she is the trickiest one in town. Impossible. I'm the trickiest trickster there is. You may be in major trouble. So? I'm always in trouble. You don't understand. The Tricky Witch will stop at nothing to prove that she is the trickiest one there is. The only way you can be safe from her is if you stop pulling pranks on people. Only then will she leave you alone. No way, angel food cake. Playing tricks is what I do. You need to stop playing tricks on people. Nobody likes it. And the witch will never leave you alone until you behave. Uh-oh, they better watch out. Letter, I bet I'll bother her more than she bothers me. The angel could see that persuading Jack to be better wasn't going to work. Well, if you won't listen to my advice and behave yourself, there is one way to stop the witch, but it won't work for too long. Go on. It's autumn, and the one thing that the witch hates more than anything is the fall harvest. She especially hates root vegetables like pumpkin, squash, potatoes, turnips. She hates potatoes? You mean she doesn't even like french fries? Not one bit. She doesn't even like sweet potato fries. My point is, if you aren't going to be good, you can at least try and stop her with that. But she'll be back. Whatever. I'll be fine. I don't care if she tries to one-up me forever. I'll always be the trickiest guy there is. 
Well, just in case, I will give you this to ward off the witch, should she come our way. If she touches it, she will be banished from our world and won't be able to come back until next year. Cool, I'll take it. Ew, what's this? It's a turnip. You know, a gourd, a root vegetable, grows in the ground, sometimes put it on salads. Have you ever eaten anything healthy, ever? The only food I eat is candy, french fries, chocolate, and candy. Wow, that's a lot of junk. I bet it hurts your belly. Do you always have a stomach ache? Yes. <laughs> that was hilarious. Anyway, use it to keep the witch away, but remember, she'll never truly leave you alone until you give up your prankster ways and become a good contributor to society. Save the spiel, Jack, ow. And so Jack left the angel and started going home. Just kidding, he pranked her first. Oh, I should have seen that coming. But after pranking the angel, Jack headed home. And once again, as Jack got close to his house, he noticed something else on the path in front of him. Hey, you pile of scrap, out of my way. Please, young man, can you help me up? Hmm, let me think about it. Psych. You just made a big mistake, young Jack, for it is I, the tricky witch. <laughs> A witch? Oh no. Let's keep reading. Chapter two, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Tricky Jack had just pranked the witch and she was not happy. You just made a big mistake, young Jack. For it is I, the tricky witch. <laughs> I've heard you think you're the trickiest lady in town. That I am. I'm the tricky witch. It's in my name. Oh yeah? Well, what kind of tricks do you do? Lots of tricks. I can turn butter into mud. I can make another me. And I can turn tree frogs into regular frogs. That's nothing. I bet you can't even make candy appear out of thin air. Oh, of course I can. Wow, that is so cool. Ooh! Hey, no fair. I didn't make that candy for you. Well, I'm the one that's eating it, so it's mine now. Hmm. You're trickier than I thought. Tell you what, let's do a challenge. At that moment, Jack remembered the angel's words. The witch will never leave you alone until you behave. But the chance to play tricks seemed too much fun, and Jack knew what he was going to do. A challenge? You're on! You say you like candy? Well, let's go around from house to house looking for some and see who can get the most. Whoever has the most wins. Oh, I'm sure I'll win this one. I'm good at taking candy, but how about we raise the stakes a little bit? Hmm. If I win, I get to keep all the candy you found. If you win, you get to keep all my candy. Sounds like a deal. Oh, too slow. Ooh, this is so exciting. So Jack and the Tricky Witch walked to the center of town and got ready for the challenge. Whoever could collect the most candy from around town would win. Okay, let's begin. On your mark, get set. Hey, I didn't say go yet, you cheater. But Jack was already collecting as much candy as he could find. He found caramel sweets in an old lady's purse, took lollipops from little children, <laughs> and even went directly to the source, the candy store. Oh no, Jack just took my whole stock of chocolate sandwich cookies. Jack felt good about his work, but oh no, the witch had a plan to trick Jack and win the bet. The witch was using her magic to make more candy. She really was a tricky witch. See, there's no way I didn't win this challenge. <laughs> How are they ever gonna get out of this one? A little while later, the challenge was over and Jack met the tricky witch to count up. It was pretty clear who'd won. Ha! It looks like I win. I'm the trickiest one of all. Wow, you sure are. I guess a bet's a bet. Here, take all my candy. Oh, that was almost too easy. Go on, Tricky Witch. Count it up. 
Oh boy, I love rubbing salt in the wound. Yes, let's count up how much more candy I have now that I have yours too. One, two, three, four. Ah, a root vegetable. Ah, I'm disappearing. He had done it. Jack had tricked the witch. And now you're banished. All of this candy is mine. That is amazing. I may be banished for now, but you'll bet I'll be back. Nobody tricks me and gets away with it. In one year, I will return and get revenge. Yeah, whatever. Revenge! Revenge! Well, I'm glad that problem has gone away and will never bother me again. But just when Jack thought all his problems were solved, a familiar face appeared in front of him. The angel had returned. You! What do you want? I told you, Jack, the witch will be back and she will keep coming back again and again until she beats you. You cannot trick her forever. Yes, I can. Want to bet? No. We just went over this. Ugh. Never mind. Anyway, beware. When her banishment ends in one year, she will be smarter and trickier than ever before. Well, so will I. That is not something to be proud of, Jack. If you keep playing tricks, you will never be free of her. She will bother you forever and ever. And if she wins, you will be her prisoner. Where would she take me? To where she came from, the realm of darkness, a world of ghosts and darkness and evil witches. So I'll just have to keep tricking her forever. That's fine by me. I'll never give up my tricky ways. You say that now, but I'm warning you, a life of trickery and rule breaking is one you will regret. Oh yeah? Wanna bet? No. Chapter three, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. After Jack beat the witch's challenge, Jack was very pleased with himself. He had outsmarted an evil witch and she wouldn't be back for another year, which for Jack felt like a long, long time. But while the next year passed and Jack continued to pull pranks on everyone he met, the angel watched over him. Look at me, I've learned nothing. And so Jack kept pulling his pranks. Soon fall turned into winter. Woohoo! And winter turned into spring. <laughs> Uh, my allergies. Uh, does anybody have a tissue? I do. Did you pour pepper on this tissue? Yes. Yes, I did. Wow, that is so mean. And spring turned into summer. Protect yourself from the sun. Buy my sunscreen. Your sunscreen doesn't work. My whole family is burned. <laughs> I'm hilarious. And winter turned back into fall. Surprise! This is unpleasant. Soon it was October 31st yet again, exactly one year since Jack had last seen the Tricky Witch. Jack woke up and knew that the witch was going to be coming for him. Oh boy, October 31st, the day the witch comes back. I bet I'll trick her again. Jack was a little nervous. What if the witch beat him? He was so anxious that he began walking around town looking for her. He looked everywhere. The fountain at the center of town. Young man, get out of there. That's where the ducks poo. I like it in here. That's so not cool. The local graveyard. Even the mayor's office. Eek, the pensing boy. Get out of here, Jack, you little trickster. As the morning turned into late afternoon, Jack decided to go home. As he strolled past the town's pumpkin patch, he found another figure curled up in the road. Please, young man, can you help me up? Aha, it's the witch. No way, Jose. I didn't even fall for this the first time. Oh, gosh darn it. Hello, Jack, it's me, the tricky witch. I'm back and for my revenge. Ah, watch out. You sure can try. You may have tricked me last time, but this time I'll make sure you don't have anything you can use to banish me. Empty your pockets. Hmm, perhaps we should do a classic challenge scenario. How about a race? A race? I love racing. I'm the fastest person in the world. Well, I'm a witch. I can move super fast. Hmm, this road isn't very long. How about instead of racing on foot, 
Let's have a climbing contest. That way, I can keep an eye on you so you don't cheat. And same to you. You cheated last time. So did you. And I still won. Enough. A climbing race it shall be. What should we climb? How about the old patch tree? Whoever gets the top first wins. Deal. Oh, no. too, too slow. slow. As Jack and the witch wandered over the big tree, the angel appeared in the sky for Jack to save. Jack, this is your last chance. You don't have to challenge her. The only way to truly win is to leave her alone. Jack thought it over, but deep down, he already knew what he was going to do. Jack was a trickster through and through, and there was no way he was backing down from the witch's challenge. Oh no, I hope he'll be okay. Don't worry, angel food cake. I got this. At the base of the tree, Jack and the witch prepared themselves for the climb. Okay, I'll count down. On your mark, get set, go! And so the tricky witch started climbing as fast as she could. She climbed higher and higher and higher. So high that she couldn't even see Jack. She couldn't believe it. It looked like she was winning. But where was Jack? He was running away? What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's keep reading. Chapter four, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Jack ran as fast as he could to the pumpkin patch nearby and started picking all the pumpkins he could. Big pumpkins, tiny pumpkins, anything he could. Then he raced back to the tree and started placing the pumpkins at the bottom. Soon there was a whole field of pumpkins at the bottom of the tree. It didn't take long for the witch to realize that Jack hadn't followed her in the race. Hey, what's going on down there? Looks like you've won again. The witch slowly climbed back down the tree, but stayed at the bottom branch as the truth hit her. There was no way for her to get down without hitting one of the pumpkins. Oh, now I get it. Oh, a root vegetable. No! What do you have to say for yourself, witch? Uh, darn it. There's no way for me to get down without being banished again. I have a new idea. What's that? You and I will make a deal. You will never bother me again for as long as I exist. You'll never take me to your home with darkness and ghosts and stuff. And what do I get in return? I'll move these pumpkins away so you can get down. The tricky witch considered Jack's words. Okay, deal. If you move the pumpkins, I will never be able to bother you and you'll never be allowed to enter the realm of darkness. Deal. You have no idea, do you? About what? Not every deal is as great as it seems. Uh-oh. This doesn't sound good. Sure, whatever. Bye, witch. You'll never bother me again. And as promised, the witch never bothered Jack again. Jack lived the rest of his life pranking people, pulling tricks, and being a troublemaker. He did so until he was a very old man, living alone and friendless. And soon Jack's life was done. I'm ready to go to the next realm. I hope it's fun. But just then, the angel appeared in front of him. Hello, angel food cake. I'm ready for you to take me to my next life. I'm sorry, Jack, but I can't. What do you mean? You weren't a good person. You spent your whole life playing tricks on people. What? Your spirit will stay in this realm and for all of eternity, and you'll never be allowed to leave. Well, that's fine. I can still play pranks and stuff. Well, actually... Psych. You're a ghost, Jack. And in that moment, Jack realized the gravity of what he'd done. He had spent his whole life finding joy in hurting other people. And now, there were consequences. That's so sad. But, but I'll change. I'll be good. I'll do good deeds. It's too late. I gave you the chance to change your ways and do good deeds when you were young. But changing your mind just because you know there are consequences isn't enough. No one should be a good person because they have to be, but because they want to be. So what do I do now? I guess that's up to you. As the angel and the witch faded away, Jack was left to wonder about everything he did. Were all the tricks worth it? In exchange for a lifetime of fun, he now had to spend eternity trapped on Earth. This is what I get for not learning my lesson. And so Jack spent the rest of eternity wandering the streets watching. He's been known to prank other tricksters like he once was so that they may not make the same mistakes. Boo! <laughs> that was so funny! 
As time passed and Jack continued to haunt the town, his story was passed down from generation to generation. Everyone knew the story of Tricky Jack and how he was trapped on Earth forever. Afraid that he would haunt them, the townspeople treated October 31st as a special day to keep tricksters away. Families would put out candy so that children could enjoy sweets freely instead of taking them like Jack did. And they also put out pumpkins to keep the Tricky Witch away. The lit pumpkins were named Jack-o'-lanterns in Jack's honor, like the lantern he held. This special day soon came to be known as Halloween, which we still celebrate today. The end. What a great story. Thanks for coming to Storytime. See you next time. Bye.